Welcome to another edition of Vikings Vintage, where we talk Vikings history. As you know, we've done seasons. We've done a couple of we've done the first two Super Bowl seasons. So this week we're doing the third Super Bowl season, and we'll probably do the fourth Super Bowl season in a couple of weeks, or maybe next week. We don't know. But so tonight, it's the seventy-four season is as you see from the thumbnail. <laughs> You have the thumbnail tonight, don't you? <laughs> Me? What? The thumbnail picture. You have that. Yeah, I have it. It's right here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Because I, I, what I do is I look up uh, the year that we're talking about, and I mm -hmm. look up like team photo or whatever of mm -hmm. that year, and it had 74 Vikings yearbook. It has a picture on my own. Yeah, that's exactly. the media guide. Yeah. Um, the other thing I have from 74 is this, actually. Let's see. Oh, I, I have to get 74. 74 is on its way here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I bought 74. But it's it's a lot like um, these right here. And um, I used to have these as a kid. And the um, only year I'm missing is 1974. <laughs> well, the one thing you'll find out as we do the history of this year is the Vikings didn't have very many losses that year, mm -mm. but the way they got the losses was kind of weird. Right. Because they only, you know, we'll talk, you know, when we get mm -hmm. into the, when we get into the schedule, you'll see what I'm talking about, about yep. the weirdness of the losses. Yeah. It's actually kind of weird. Well, you know, the, um, the year started 1974 in the NFL altogether. That was a year that they moved the goalposts out of the end zone and put them in the back of the end zones because they used to be in the like right on the goal line and they moved them out of the end zone. And that was in 74. They they lightened up on a lot of the passing because they wanted teams to throw the ball more. So they changed that rule. And we had our first labor unrest. Um the first game of the preseason, the Viking veterans didn't play. The only ones that played in those games in the NFL were free agents and draft choices. Um, the, the NFL veterans basically had a lock. They had a lockout. They went on strike. Um, it lasted maybe a week. So, I mean, the season you could kind of the legal the 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 legal stuff and the player stuff was starting in '74. And then there were rule changes. And then, you know, the Vikings, you know, they they had two number one draft choices. So the uh, the strike was from July 1st until August 10th. Yep. Yeah. And the Vikings, the Vikings started camp like late July. And um, they didn't. Um, what happened was the veterans didn't play in the first game. It was the rookies. So, yeah. Um, they open up. We open up the season against Denver. It was a loss, but um, you know what? Nineteen seventy four also was. What's that? That was the first season without Bill. That was the last season without Bill Belichick being a head coach, or being some kind of a coach. Being some kind of coach. Some seventy five until twenty twenty three. Bill Belichick was either a head coach or a coach in the NFL. That's forty friggin' years. That's fifty. Forty eight years. years. Yeah. My God, I wasn't okay. Just to give you an idea of how long ago 1974 was, I was in second grade. <laughs> I was in second grade. I wasn't even here yet. You weren't even thought of. <laughs> well, no, I was thought of. <laughs> I'm sure my mom was thinking about me at that time. You know, you know? My, my brother was alive by then, but but uh, I was thought of. But right. Know. The yeah, I was didn't come until the year later. I but. turned eight in October. I was in second grade. 
Um, but yeah, that's how long ago it was. And a lot of the changes that we saw as the NFL went on started in 74. And um, the Vikings went into training camp once they got everybody there. It was, they were going to repeat. It was basically, there wasn't, there wasn't any, you know, there wasn't a, uh, you know, they weren't, they were probably, they were 12 and 2 in 73. Everybody expected them to be 12 and 2 or better in 74. And they almost were, except for a couple of breakdowns in games late. So they had a lot of injuries in 74, though, too. They did. Um, yeah. uh, Chuck Foreman became the game maker, the game player that he was. He became the kind of the, the star of the offense in 74. Um, defensively, we had a ton of injuries on defense. Um, uh, Gary oh, Larson. 74 was the first year of the new overtime rule. Yes, it was. Yes, it Second was. Overtime. Before before the game just ended in a tie. Yeah, they, if, what, if the game's ended in regulation in a tie. That's why and you would was, have it some. It was 10 minutes, not 15, too. Uh, for the overtime? Yeah, the overtime was 10 minutes. No, it was 15, sudden death. Um, and then uh, they changed it back. To, then they changed it to 15, then they changed it back to 10. It I always remembered it as 15. Yeah. Because I remember it was sudden death. Whoever scored first. Oh, you know what? One. By the way it's written, it makes mm-hmm. no sense. Okay, yeah. It was it was I'm 50- sorry, Wikipedia, you need an editor. <laughs> no, you got people that go into Wikipedia and they'll edit it and they'll do it just to yeah. piss people off. They'll put something up there that's not even then, possible. The goal post, you were right about that. Mm-hmm. Uh missed field goals. Uh the defensive team took position at the line of scrimmage or the 20 yard line. Whichever was farthest from the goal line, 19, right? Um, and then 1994 is when they moved it to where the kick was missed. Yep, they changed um, that before. Kickoff yep. was moved to the 35 yard line, previously mm-hmm. the 40 40 yard line to reduce touchbacks, um, which didn't help the Vikings because Fred Cox did not have that strong of a leg. So, yeah. average teams were starting on offense at about their own 20, 30, 34 yard line. A punt returns. Members of the kicking team cannot go beyond the line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked, except for the player at the farthest end of the side of the snapper, the gunners. The original rule change would have prohibited any player from crossing the line of scrimmage prior to the ball being kicked. Yep. An eligible uh, pass receiver can only be contacted once by defenders and the receiver has gone three yards beyond the line of scrimmage. So that's when you're talking about when they wanted to, okay, so they wanted to open up the offense. Yeah. Um, yeah, then defensive team commits an illegal use of hands, arms, or body foul from behind the line of scrimmage. The penalty would be set from the previous spot, uh, not the spot of the foul. I guess before it was from the spot of the foul. Uh, penalties of office to holding illegal use of hands, tripping were reduced from 15 to 10 yards. Tripping was returned to a 15 yard penalty in 2023. Uh, wide receivers blocking back towards the ball within three yards from the line of scrimmage may not block below the waist. Yep. And then all, in addition to on-the-field rule changes, the league eliminated the future list of players the team could sign without placing them on active roster. The future ha- list had been formalized by the league in 1965 and existed over a decade before that. And that Futures renamed, list Was that Futures list a taxi squad? It was renamed the practice squad in 1977. Okay. Okay. So the practice squad makes much more sense. Right. Well, they... <laughs> They had the practice squad, and before that, they had the taxi squad, and then yeah. um, they just made it the practice squad, which now we know it as a practice squad. But it says that 74 was the biggest year of rule changes in the NFL. Yeah, that was the most rule changes they had had since the merger. And yeah. um, I think, yeah, they didn't even have that many rule changes. When the merger happened, I think they just kind of combined everybody's rules together. Yeah. Um, the AFL and the NFL, they kind of merged them in, except for the whole uh, overtime thing. Never had overtime until 74. What up, what up, Gigi? I'm not sure if this is Jamie or Casey. It's probably Jamie. I don't think Casey. But, but yeah. But uh, mm. so the first draft pick in the 74 was Ed Too Tall Jones. Mm-hmm. Went to the Cowboys. Some people thought he was too tall to play. They didn't think he was going to make it. They didn't. He was, he was like what seven two. Uh, 
was he? No, he was six. Oh, you six ten? He was uh, six. He was six and three quarters, so pretty much six ten. Six ten, yeah. Yeah. But I knew he was tall. That's tall for a, you know. Yeah, he was. Um, they said he was kind of a work in progress, but he did okay. You know, did all right. I think when he when he left and went and did the boxing thing, he actually came back a better football player after his boxing stint. Got his hands. Yeah, faster. he his hands and his hands got faster, and he became a, he was an all pro after that. Um, it helps that he had at that time he had uh, Harvey Martin on the other side that helped. But I mean, he was he could play. He was good. Who was the number two draft choice? Uh, let me see. Uh, they brought him up specifically. Uh, 74 draft. Okay, so Bob, Bo, okay, so Bo Matthews with the Chargers. Oh, he Running was a back. bust. He was a bust. John Hicks, Giants took, uh, Giants took third, John Hicks. He was from Michigan. Uh, he played guard. Didn't have the longest career. I think he maybe played five or six years, and that was it. So there's a couple of pro bowlers um, taken. Uh, looks like there's only a couple of – looks like there's only a couple – there's only two Hall of Famers taken in the first round. A lot of pro bowl uh, – there's uh, like five pro bowlers. Um, so John Dutton for the Baltimore. Baltimore, he was uh, – he played defensive end with Baltimore when they were known as a sack pack. And then, and then he got traded to the Cowboys. The first Hall of Famer taken in that draft was Randy Gratishar. The dip, the middle, middle linebacker for the Broncos. Yep. Uh, yep. The Vikings took Fred McNeil. We took Fred McNeil and Steve Riley. We had two. And then uh, Henry Lawrence was the other pro bowler. From the with Raiders. the Raiders, yep. And Len Swan was taken 21st. Oh, that's right. Len Swan with the Steelers. And then uh, Roger Carr was all, was a all pro. He was a good receiver with the Colts. Yeah. For, for a short amount of time, he was a very good receiver. And with the Colts. Steve Riley. Was taking twenty four. Was taking twenty fifth. Yep, we took Steve Riley. Um, you know the the John Holland was taken in the second round by Minnesota. So was Matt Blair. And then uh, Steve Nelson was a Pro Bowler. Uh, Keith Fonhorse, both from Minnesota. And then uh, Dave Casper, Hall of Famer, from another one from Minnesota. Jack Lambert, Hall of Famer. Oh, from Kent State, yes. Devin Williams, Pro Bowler, and then Matt Blair, Pro Bowler. Delvin Williams, running back? Uh, Delvin, D-E-L-V-I-N, Williams. Delvin back. Williams, yeah. Played yep. with the Niners and the Dolphins. Yep, and then uh, Pro Bowler in round three was Danny White. Quarterback, Cowboys. Yep, quarterback for the Cowboys, punter. He's doing the punting for years. Yeah. Uh, Nat Moore, the first helicopter receiver. <laughs> I think we, I think we were. I'm trying. I, I don't know if I was at that game for because I lived in South Florida at the time, so I'm not sure when he did that helicopter. If if we we're at the game or if we were no, that was that when know. he did that helicopter. That was in the Meadowlands. Okay, so then, so then it was on TV. Yeah, that, that was in the Meadowlands when he when he did the helicopter. Scott, the Vikings took Scott Anderson before that. Oh, Scott. Okay, Scott Anderson. My God. Um, uh, next he, was a, he was a head case if there ever was one. Uh, then the next Hall of Famer was pick in round four, pick eighty two. Uh, John Stallworth. Steelers. Uh, yep. And then Tony what? Bell was taken by the Baltimore Colts. Steve it back, Bowling Green. How how did it feel being drafted? I wouldn't know. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god well it is, uh, it's even funnier because remember in the 80s the cardinals had a linebacker named anthony bell uh, and, yeah. like, and everybody's like dude you're playing football i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> if i was i wouldn't be talking to you <laughs> yeah. and the vikings took uh mike townsend in the fourth round who did they take mike townsend yeah he didn't he didn't make the team uh, next pick after him was a uh, Mike Brola from a quarterback from Sanford. Uh, he was a Pro Bowler. 
Oh, Mike Barilla with the with Barilla, the uh, yeah, okay. with the uh, Eagles. And then Frank Lamaster was uh, taken by the Eagles. Linebacker with the Eagles. Yeah. So, and then there really, I don't think there's any more Hall of. There's one more. Oh, actually, there is one more Hall of Famer. So, a couple more Pro Bowlers: Henry Henry Childs. Yeah, with the he went to the Saints. He was at the Saints. Right, and then uh, Steve Odom. He was a Packer. Next Hall of Famer is Mike Webster. Oh yeah, Mike. That was that was the draft class that built the Steelers. Yeah. That was a draft class that built the Steelers, and of course they went to the Super Bowl. Um, here's a funny thing about that draft for the Vikings: the the top th- the three of the guys that we drafted that year in the top the top two, Matt Blair, Fred McNeil, Steve Riley, they're no longer with us. They're gone. Mike Webster is gone. Um, there's quite a few guys from that draft that are no long, no longer with us. Yeah, you know, it's kind of sad, but it was a it was a good draft. And the Vikings, the Vikings going into the season, the talk was already that they were old. And then what happened in the Super Bowl was Miami exposed it. So, you know, you had to get you had to get younger on defense, especially. Hence, they drafted McNeil and Blair, who ended up taking over for both. Uh, Winston and Hilgenberg. Um, you had to get stronger on the line too, which is where they they moved Doug Sutherland into the starting lineup on the defensive line. He was split in time with uh, Gary Larson. Um, by the end of the year, Sutherland was starting, and then um, in the secondary, we lost Bobby. Br- Bobby Bryant got hurt. I believe after the Cowboy game, he was gone for the year because he didn't play in the Super Bowl. Jackie Wallace was a starter, and um, we had a lot of we had a lot of injuries on defense. Uh, Roy Winston and Hilgenberg were both hurting. Um, Jeff Seaman missed some time. Amos Martin started for him, but the, really the only guys that were healthy for the most year were. Um, Page, Eller, Marshall, and uh, Paul Krause. Yeah, you know. So that that so that so the last Hall of Famer was taken uh, was taken in round five. There was only two more All Pros after that. Uh, Billy White Shoes Johnson. Was oh yeah, White Shoes. Yeah. He was taken round fifteen. Wow. You talk about someone overcoming where they were drafted. Wow. He did what the chicken dance? What was he that? Did that he did that that thing with his legs, the celebration in the end zone, yeah. or it looked like it looked like the funky chicken if you think about it. <laughs> yeah, um, he did that, and then he played he played for uh, Houston. Then he went to Canada, and uh, then he came back and played for the Falcons. Actually, there was a Hall of Famer who was undrafted free agent. From 74? Yep. Guess what team he played for. What uh, 74 undrafted? Give me a hint. Offensive lineman. Oh, I'm sorry. No, sorry. Uh, that's the guy above him. Safety. South Carolina State. South Carolina State. What color is the jerseys of the team? Well, if I tell you that, you're going to get it. No, there's a, I doubt it. Uh, are you talking about the college? No, um, Hall of Famer, yeah, free agent, yep, safety out of Miak. Not Kenny Houston. He's a Hall of Famer, and there's a theme going. There's a theme going. Yeah, this team already has three Hall of Famers out of this draft. Oh, oh, oh. Donnie Shell. Yes. Okay. That's amazing. You get that many Hall of Famers in one season. How did the Steelers, my God. Yeah. You, and you still, and you put them with Ham and Green and Greenwood. Yeah. And you still had, um, you had Cole the offense, Bradshaw, Harris, Blyer. My God. I, and they still, was, then they still, they still barely beat us. Yeah, the refs actually helped him in that game. Yeah. 
the refs actually helped them in that Super Bowl. Um, yeah. Anybody that has never seen it, it's it's on YouTube. The complete game, it's on YouTube. And of all the Super Bowls, we were closest with the Steelers. Even even though we couldn't run the ball, we were close. So, you know, but like it's it's that one was. And there was a lot of shenanigans even before the Super Bowl. Um, the team was put up in a really janky hotel, and it was just bad. And it was – the NFL did not look out the for A janky them. hotel in New Orleans? I mean, it was janky, beyond janky. <laughs> it could have been in the red light district. I don't know. Um, but it was bad. Uh, Stu Voigt talks about it. He's like, that, that hotel was terrible. Was Mike terrible. has a comment. Like yeah, I mean, we're, we're supposed, AFL, we're supposed, supposed to be an team. AFL team, yeah. Yep, we talked about it on that very first show. Yeah, you know. Yeah, Davey, you're right. That Larry Brown fumble is what screwed us. You know, that would have been – that right there would have been a game changer, especially after, you know, Matt blocked the punt. And, you know, and you, you kind of felt momentum swing to the Vikings. You did. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it's it, – you know, we've got so many could have, what would have, and just if they had just won one Super Bowl, and this was the one they could have won. This is why this why this one hurt the most because they were closest in this Super Bowl. If you take away the yards that Franco Harris got on the ground, um, the game was close. Norm Van Brocklin was also fired. That's Ooh, he got he fi- yeah he got fired from Atlanta didn't he two and six when he got fired yeah he got fired uh, Detroit Lions had to replace their head coach because he died Don he McCaffrey. passed away before the season started he yeah. had a, had heart, a attack. heart attack yeah Don McCaffrey that's that was what uh, that's how Rick Forzano got the head coaching job yeah um, and I think Dan Devine's last year was seventy four with the Packers. Uh, Weeb Banks also resigned. Yep, Weeb Banks resigned. Uh, um, I don't know if Joe Namath played at all in '74. He was having knee problems really bad, and there was, you know, he was. Um, there was he he missed a lot of time. Howard Schnellenberger was fired by the Colts. Yeah, Schnellenberger got fired. Colts had hit bottom. Yeah, uh, the Bills. Uh, that was the first year of the. The Buffalo Bills with their current helmet with the Buffalo with the with the red stripe before yep. it was the standing Buffalo. Yep, that was the, the Cowboys first. moved the TV numbers on the white jersey. Yep. The switch the T switched to gray to white face mask. The Dolphins modified their helmet logo with the sunburst. The Chargers changed their uniforms altogether. The the Philadelphia Eagles switched from white to green helmets. Okay. Remember Philly had those damn near see through uniforms? You could see their shoulder pads. It was like, yeah, yeah, that was the year they went to those us- those jerseys. I mean, if you if you didn't think these were high school jerseys, <laughs> yeah, and uh, the Chargers went from powder blue to navy blue. They went to the or navy blue, blue, which is yeah. what they were wearing in the uh, Dan Fouts years, right? You know, actually, the Vikings changed their uniforms too because they went with the the purple uniforms, the home uniforms. They had the stripes on the jerseys on the arm, where in 73, they didn't wear those jerseys. But they went to those jerseys primarily. Yeah, Mike, it was. Damn Cowboys. We haven't talked about that season yet. We will, unfortunately. It's That season is as much of a heartbreaker as 98. We're gonna, maybe more so. When we do that season, we're going to have to put this up for Tony. <laughs> oh God, yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely, definitely. But yeah, I mean, yeah, you know what, Davy? I think the NFL did that two years in a row with the Vikings, because from what I heard, the, the accommodations for the the Super Bowl in New Orleans weren't better than Houston. I heard they were pretty bad too. Well, that's because Dan Devine knew the writing was on the wall with how bad the Packers were. Yeah, he uh, um, he just um, 
see Bob, you're gonna you're gonna have Tony come through this screen. That's the 75 game, Bob. I'm talking about seven. Don't get me started on 75. <laughs> My blood pressure is right at I, the- I don't know if Bob is serious or if he just does <laughs> that to get underneath your skin. <laughs> well, if anybody knows me, they're like <laughs> It's like you really want to piss Tony off? Just mention <laughs> seventy-five. <laughs> you know, it's just um, that is that's for me. That's even that hurts more than ninety-eight and two thousand and two thousand nine. They that just does. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean seventy-four. We well, the the truth is, we shouldn't even have faced the Steelers in the Super Bowl. It should have been the Raiders. Yeah. It should have been the Raiders. And I think they get the Raiders that year, too. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Um, But Pittsburgh went on the road. They went into Pittsburgh and dominated them. They literally dominated them. I mean, we um, we beat the Rams, but we were kind of... Well, the Rams and the Vikings were, quote-unquote, the best two teams in 74. Yeah, that was the year that the Cowboys fell off. Um Cowboys didn't even make the playoffs. Matter of fact, uh, I believe St. The Cardinals won the division, uh, and, and I think the Redskins might have been wild card or flip or vice versa. Uh, so the playoff teams in the AFC were Buffalo and Pittsburgh, Miami mm-hmm. and Oakland, uh, Washington, Los Angeles, St. Louis, and Minnesota. Yeah, in the NFC, and I think Washington was the wild card. Yeah, St. Louis game was not even close for Minnesota. No. It wasn't. Um, played in Minnesota weather. It was played in Minnesota weather. Um, but that was, they just went out there and dominated it. That was, and that was actually the game where uh, Lertzma said that, you know, if you hear, if you remember Conrad Dobler, he would say on interviews, the only other person he didn't get along with was Doug Sutherland. And that's because Sutherland bit him. <laughs> and, um, that's that's the playoff game. I don't know if it was a playoff game because we played the Cardinals in regular season too on a Monday night. Um, I got the uh, when I talked to Bob Lertzma, I got the idea that it was a playoff game, and Sutherland did bite him. <laughs> he did yeah. bite him. Yeah, Mike, you're definitely going to join us for the '75 show. Mike, don't get my blood pressure up, please. Yeah, they screwed us on the play before. He was out of bounds when he caught that pass. God. You know what? You know what, Davey? It was – I remember going to school the next day. And, you know, when you're kids, the kids don't really know. So you just – life goes on. But the, teachers probably, go to work. but the teachers probably had a different reaction. The teachers, it bothered them. My dad didn't go to work. <laughs> I almost didn't go to work in uh, in 09. Oh, I remember day. 09. It just – put it this way. I don't know which was worse, 09 or 98, because when we lost in 98, that Monday after the game felt like the, like, just hey, our first, our first don't know. Thank you, George. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks, George. Um, well, there it is, folks. <laughs> <laughs> our cherry's been popped. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, George, so much. Appreciate you, buddy. Thank you, George. We appreciate it. Um, yeah. I mean, a day after that Atlanta game, it was just, it was like a fog here to Twin Cities. It was, it, it just air was just like deflated. Yeah. Um, and it was the same way in '09. It was just, it was just like. It, just, it reminds me of um, in '94. Because uh, that's Tony Gwynn's a favorite baseball player, so I was, you know, I was watching the World Series with the Twins. Mm-hmm. When the Twins got that lead, and then they blew it, you could just feel like the air, like on the Padres sideline. You could just feel the air. Oh hell, you know, it we're gone. You know, so it's like because they've even though the Padres have been to two World Series, they they have never won a game in the World Series. Right. So like you know, so it's kind of like in, in my mind because. <laughs> to be honest, I mean, I mean, with my the twins, they're you know, I've seen the twins have success, so it's you know, so 
but the football is the Vikings are the one team I think everybody who who's a Minnesota sports fan is the team that everybody wants. Like the Timberwolves are the best in the West, but no one cares. No one watches NBA in Minnesota. No one cares. Um. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're watching they're watching basketball now, but it's usually the Wolves have never been this competitive. And they've actually never been this dominant. So this is well, new too. They were competitive that one year they had Sam Cassell, Latrell Speedwell, uh Kevin Garnett. Yeah, that was but catch that yeah. was 20 years ago. And at the I same know. and here's the funny thing. At the same time, to, that hey, was I need to feed my kids, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and at the same time that was happening, the wild were in the playoffs. Yep. Yeah. So we we kind of the Vikings have, were crappy that year though. <laughs> yeah, and the Vikings got knocked out of the playoffs thanks to no. thanks to who was the quarterback for which quarterback was that for the Cardinals? The guy who's our offensive, who's our quarterback coach, Luke McCown. Yeah, was it Josh or Luke? I thought it was Luke. He's one of the McCown brothers. But Nathan I think it was, was, I think it was Luke. It. Nathan McCown. Nathan's the guy who caught it. Uh, Nathan Poole. Yeah, and he got a damn. Ticker tape parade in Green Bay. Jeez. Oh, yeah, they gave him the seat of the kitty. How pathetic are you as a fan base that you have to thank some dude from your an opposing team? You give him a ticker tape parade because you made the playoffs? <sighs> God. Jeez. So, the first game of the season that year was against, speaking of the Packers, it was against the Packers. Yeah, and they were the Packers. They 30, this is 30, 32 to 17. Now, for all if we do have Packer fans who do watch us, who do come in here, and if you're under and if you're under 40, then you don't you only you only you've only heard about Favre and Rogers. The Packers from was it 70 to 91 were were probably the worst team in the league. Yeah, they were. They won the division in 72, and that was a fluke because the Vikings Right, shot themselves, and so did the Lions. The Vikings and the Lions shot themselves in the foot. But they, I mean, 73 rolled around, they were right back to being horse horse crap. They were. So, and they couldn't They couldn't get the quarterback position right. It was so bad, they traded for John Hadle in the middle of 74 from the chart with the, with the Rams. Yeah. So, uh, Fred Cox with 20-yard field goal. Mm-hmm. And then Chester uh, Markoy. Chester Markle. Uh 19 yard field goal. Mm-hmm. John Brockington, five yard rush. Mm-hmm. Then Foreman, 18 yard. Foreman, one yard. Chuck Foreman, three yard. Uh, Fred Cox, 21 yard field goal. Steve Odom, 18 yard rush. And then Amos Martin, 15 yard special return, uh, special teams return for a bump. Yeah, he recovered. They tried to run a reverse on the. On the kickoff, and they fumbled it, and he picked so, it up and ran it for a touchdown. The Packers had less than 200 total yards in that game. I think they had four turnovers. They had uh, four turnovers. Yeah, that's what I thought. They had three fumbles. Yep. And I believe the starting quarterback was Scott Hunter or Jerry uh, Jerry Tag. Jerry Taggy. Okay. Yeah, he was nine of twenty for 102 yards. <laughs> He was just oh, he was man. just bad. The leading was, rusher was Brockington, 53 yards. And Brockington, I mean, John Brockington was their workhorse back then. Um, I don't yeah, MacArthur Lane was still there. Yeah, he was the work hard. He was their workhorse. Uh MacArthur Lane had eleven carries, twenty nine yards. Yeah. Uh Chuck Foreman, twenty two for sixty seven, three touchdowns, eighteen recep uh five receptions, thirty two yards. Mm-hmm. Oscar Reed, 17 for 64. And Ed Marinero, 4 for 16. Yep. Uh, yep. Tarkington only completed 14 passes, and five, nine of them were to the running backs. That was the Viking offense. You know, and don't forget now, Fran didn't have the strongest arm. So, you know, him throwing deep downfield, if he was, it was for John Gilliam, but he didn't have the strongest arm. Um, Mike, I, I gotta admit something. Those Quazzo years, put it this way. If Joe Cap stays here, we win at least one Super Bowl, and it's probably against the Colts in 70. I think, um, 
I think if if Cap sticks around, we do win a Super Bowl. Um, now, does that mean if Tark? I was thinking about this. Does Tark come back to Minnesota? Possibility. It's a possibility. Because uh, Joe didn't play much longer after he went through what he went through with the free agency, and then he, you know, he was out of football. That is it, Mike's comment. That, that's I don't care if they beat him in the regular season the next afterwards. <laughs> you know, yeah, they would. Um, yeah, they would. Only one they didn't beat was the Raiders. The Raiders actually waxed them in the regular season the next year. But yeah. Um, yeah, we beat the Dolphins in preseason. We were the first ones to beat them. Yeah. Made headline news. That was when preseason meant something. Now it doesn't, but it was when it meant something. I don't know. Maybe this year KOC will play his quarterback. He's gonna have to. He got he he can't sit as he can't sit his starting offense with a new quarterback. He's got a they're gonna have to play in preseason. He's gonna have to play his veterans in preseason a little bit. I, and so their next game was against the Lions. And that one was, that one, uh, I remember watching that game. If you like offensive football, if you wanted to see scores, forget it. There was no offense in that game. Um, 48 degrees with, with uh, wind at 15 miles an hour. Yeah. This is in Detroit. Detroit played outdoors. And it was sunny. <laughs> they played at Tiger Stadium. Yeah, they played at Tiger Stadium. And um, the Vikings won 7-6. to six. The only touchdown was Chuck Foreman. 11 yard rush. 11 yard rush. It was a it was a draw play that he scored on. But yeah, the defense played their the defense played their played their asses off. The Vikings had two turnovers and they still won. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They, they only allowed 162 yards total. Yeah. The defense was just on it. I mean, and the front four, the you know, they the front four had a tendency to dominate the Lions every now and then. And that was kind of, you know, if they needed a game to to show their dominance, it was usually the Lions. That game was no exception. That game was no exception to the rule. They did it that game, too. Chuck Foreman almost had 100 yards rushing, 12 for 83. Yeah. Oscar Reed, 9 for 30. Dave Osborne, 3 for 8. John Gilliam, John Gilliam, sorry. I would say Gilliam. Leading receiver, he had uh, 4 for 87. Yep. Yeah. Oh, by the way, the, the Lions had a starting safety by the name of Charlie West, who had been traded in the uh, offseason by the Vikings to the uh, to Lions. Oh, here's what we didn't. Uh, Dick Duran was the other starter. Dick Duran was the other. Here's what we didn't talk about. Now, this was a big, big thing. After the Super Bowl, during the 74 offseason, Vikings general manager Jim Finks resigned. He resigned because he got into it with the owner Max Winter. Uh, Jim Finks wanted ownership in the team. And Mike Lynn would not let him have it because, you know, I can see where Finks was thinking. He helped build that team. He wanted ownership. And Max Winter wouldn't give it to him. So he basically resigned, which – Ushered in the era of Mike Lynn. Yeah, the, the yeah the Vikings also traded Bob Lee and Lonnie Warwick. They did. They traded them in '73, and then uh, they got Bob Barry in the draft. Uh, Carl Gerber, Gersbach and Clinton Jones to the Chargers. Yeah, they were all traded yeah. in '73. Uh, oh yeah, so, but these are the these are the draft picks they got for them. Okay. Uh, the Vikings traded Bob Brown to New Orleans in exchange for New Orleans fourth round pick, and then they uh, they traded uh, their fourth round pick to the Bengals for Steve Olson. Uh, the Vikings traded Gene Washington to the Broncos, and they got Rod Sherman back. Uh, mm-hmm. The Vikings uh, traded with the, with the Colts. They got Charlie Stokes. 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 Oh, Charlie Sto- Stokes. Yeah, he ended up playing yeah. with a couple of other teams. And then the Vikings traded Stokes to the Rams. Yeah, that's where he went. Yeah. And then the Vikings traded a draft pick to the Eagles for Ron Porter. So it looks like they got they got rid of better players than what they got. And Ron Porter was a 
draft trip. We got around Porter in 73, so he was done by 74. Yeah. But we had to pay for that. John Beasley, what did we get for him? Uh, let's see. I think he got traded to the Saints. Tight end. Was that 74 or 73? 74. Let's not have Beasley on here. Let me go to Pro Preference. Mike, I got to correct you on that. Jim Finks never won a Super Bowl. He had left the Bears to take over the Chicago Cubs. He built the Bears, but he did not. He wasn't there when they went to the Super Bowl. He uh, he went and joined the Chicago Cubs for a year and built them into a playoff team in the majors. And then um, he ended up in New Orleans. But yeah, he didn't get a he didn't get a Super Bowl with the Bears. But he built that Bears team. He built them. God, look at all those people that got rings. <laughs> Yeah, it goes back to it goes back to um, all the people who have left Minnesota and won after they left. Well, funny thing is, Jerry Burns got two rings with the Packers, and then he came to Minnesota. He was a defensive backs coach under Lombardi, sixty six yeah. and sixty seven. So, so who do we play third? Was that the Bears? Well, I was just noticing something about the preseason. Huh? They did the exact same thing in the preseason that they did in the regular season when it comes to losses. Oh, we had a tie. No, they uh, well, they may, they may have had a tie, but that's not what I'm talking about. What's up? Every other than other than Super Bowl, the first two games they played in the preseason, they lost. Yeah, one of them was to the Dolphins. Right, and then. In the regular season, they had four losses, but their four losses were were back to back losses twice in a row. Oh, that's right. That's right. Which that's we'll get when we get to that string. There's yeah. a story there too. But yeah, they lost to uh, Denver with no veterans, and then Monday night they played the Dolphins with the veterans and. Oh. All you could hear was just Howard Cosell just basically ah. blowing Larry Zonka. My God. <laughs> it was annoying. Do not put that out in the atmosphere, Mike. Well, my girl will be happy. I won't. <laughs> oh, Mama, you going to bed? Night, Good night, Mama. Mama. Yeah, Trisha will be happy if that happens. And I want our team to win a Super Bowl, just not with Kirk Cousins. <laughs> I don't want a team. See, I'm the other way. I don't want a team who's never won before to win for Minnesota gets theirs. I don't even care anymore. I just so, don't. The third game was Chicago. Yeah, and the Vikings had a couple of touchdowns called back by penalties. Uh, mm. Eleven to seven was the was the final. Yeah. I mean, a safety, uh, I think it was all over field goals. No, Steve White got 11 yard touchdown pass. He must have missed six or point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's his name was not the most accurate kicker, Fred Cox, by this time. He just wasn't. Yeah. So, um, so the safety was Hillenberger tackled Parsons in the end zone. Yeah. They botched a punt. And then Steve Voigt, 11 yard pass from, from Tarkington. Fred okay. Cox, 32 yard field goal. Then Gary Huff, three yard rush. Yeah. And, this was a year before the Bears drafted Walter Payton. So they didn't they, they didn't had, uh, there. Gen Grant Gen Granberry. Oh, Ken Granberry? Yeah, and Dave Gag Gagon were the two were their running backs. Yeah. They had Ron Bull, didn't they? Uh he's not. If he if he was on there, he didn't get any stats. It was Dave Gag uh it was Mike Granberry, Dave Gagnon. Uh, Jim Harrison, Perry Williams, and Don Rivers. Okay. Charlie Wade was their receiver. He had six catches, 112 yards. Yeah, I think that was on uh, Nate Wright. But they never exactly – they didn't – I mean, they didn't set the world on fire. That game was – and once again, it was a defense. 
It was a defense. They yeah. they would like bend but not break. And special teams was kind of the difference maker when Hilgenberg got the uh when Hilgenberg got Parsons in the end zone. Yeah, it was uh Don Parsons um Bob Parsons had uh for punts, he had four punt returns for 120 uh he had four punts for 123 yards. Yeah. Um so and then, and our uh, return our return game back then was terrible. Uh, so the kick returns. Uh, so Brett McCallahan, two for sixty, and then Jackie Wallace, one for fifteen. Yeah, that and then Larry it. Marshall at two yard, two punt returns for nineteen yards. But the yeah, Bears were the Larry Bears weren't much better. The Bears that weren't much better. Ike Hill, Cliff Taylor. Oh yeah, they were yeah. That was the that was the Abe Gibran coached Chicago Bears, and they were not, they were not good, not good. Yeah, look, I, I, I can see why. Yeah. I mean, Gary Huff is a quarterback. Harrison Granberry, Charlie Wade was good. Uh, George For George Farmer, Fred Padgett, Steve Kinney, Ernie Janet, Rich Cody, Bob Newton, Bob Asher. Yeah, that was our front line. God, there ain't nobody good on that team. Yeah, that was a front line. Uh, even their defense was bad. Uh, Dave Gallagher, Jim Osborne, Wally Chambers, Gary uh, Havernak, H H R I V N A K. Havernak. Uh, Havernak. Uh, uh, Bob Buffoon or Doug Buffoon? Doug Buffoon. Uh, we, I know, but you know, it's not better to say the other way. Wayman Bryant. Jimmy oh, Wayne Bryant, yeah. This uh Wayne Bryant was a starter before uh yeah. Mike Singletary. Jimmy Gunn, Alan Ellis, Joe Taylor, Craig Clemens, and Gary Lyle. Yeah. Wow. Only That's... all pro on that only all pro on that team was Wally Chambers. That is awful. He was the all pro. Um you know, Davey, we were good special teams when it came to blocking kicks, but our return game yeah. was not not the best. We were the best at blocking kicks. Um, and when we really got good was when we actually got Matt Blair. Um, the things that Matt could do on special teams as far as block kick, I mean, they could turn games around. Um, Matt, Fred, especially extra points and point afters, you know, so that helped a lot. But, yeah, we our return game was never – I don't remember us having a really good return game till we got – I'll say Manfred Moore, and that was only a year, and that was in '77. But up until then, we just we didn't really have a return game. Maybe Lenny Willis. In so that, that Chicago Bear game was the only home game so far. The first two were on the road, and their fourth game was also on the road. That was Dallas, right? Cowgirls. Yeah, and we beat them. <laughs> That was a Chuck Foreman game. Chuck, Chuck Foreman was the offense in that game. Um, uh, 23 to 21. Yep. We won it on a last second Fred Cox field goal. So Golden Richards, 58 yard pass from Roger Staubach. Yep. Fred Cox, 46 yard field goal. Uh, Chuck Foreman, 60 yard, 66 yard pass from Tarkenton. Fred yep. Cox, 30 yard field goal. And so that was it for the first half. Chuck Foreman, 13 yard pass from Chuck, uh, from Fran Tarkenton. And Walt Garrison for the Cowboys, five yard pass. Calvin Hill, six yard rush. Mm -hmm. And then Fred Cox, 27 yard field goal. Yeah, and that came down to the last minute. And it didn't look like he made the field goal. He barely made that field goal. How many yards was that last field goal? Uh, the last field goal was 22, 27 yards. Yeah, which was, and Cox made a 46 yarder earlier? Uh, yep, 46 yard field goal. That was stretching it for him. <laughs> He Even made a 46 then. yarder, a 30 yarder, and a 27 yarder. Yeah, that 46 yarder was stretching it for him. Which well, it meant they kicked it at the 36 yard line. So and, yeah, uh, that was that was stretching it for him. But yeah, that was uh it was a good game. It was the a Cowboys good... had four interceptions. Yeah. As much as we say how good Tarkenton was, he was really Bad at throwing interceptions. So, um, no, Stallback threw four picks. Stallback threw four? Yeah. 
How many did Fran throw? None. Oh, Fran had a perfect. So game. this is probably like, yeah, he had a passer rating of one twenty two point nine. Okay. He probably didn't have that very often. No. Um, what? Did, okay. What did uh, what did Chuck have stat wise? Uh, Chuck had twenty three yards, uh, twenty three attempts uh, rushing, seventy two yards. He had five receptions for one hundred thirty one yards. Okay. And yeah, then, it, was, uh, it was a Chuck Foreman show. Yeah, Dave Osborne had eight rushes for had eight rushes for twenty yards. Edmund Arrow two for seven. Uh, John Holland three catches for fifty five yards. And Holland was splitting time with uh, Jim Lash. Jim Lash, the other wide receiver stats. spot. Yeah. Thank you again, George. Uh, Calvin Hill ninety five yards rushing. Well, he was a workhorse. Yeah, he was a Cowboys workhorse. Um, yeah, George. Thank you so much. Man. Thank you so much, George. He would Calvin Hill once Dwayne Thomas left, he became the vocal point of that offense, and he was he was the he was the uh, he was a workhorse. Um, now they had Drew Pearson, Golden Richards, Stallback was there. Um, that was Bob Lilly's last year with the Cowboys, but they still had Leroy Jordan. They still had uh, Cliff Harris and and Charlie Waters. On the secondary, but yeah, that was the year the Cowboys. The Cowboys didn't make the playoffs that year, which was a first. So oh, yeah, mean, Hill went to Washington. He went to the went to the uh, didn't cheat their way to the playoffs. No, he went to the Calvin Hill went to the World Football League first, and then he ended up in uh, Washington. So yeah, he went to Washington, and then he ended his career with the Cleveland Browns. So, yeah, so yeah. we're what? The Vikings are what, 4-0 and at this time? Uh, the Vikings are 4-0, and and mm-hmm. that, well, yeah, the, that put the Cowboys at 1-3. and Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the Cowboys were losing games, the close games that they used to, that they were used to winning, they were losing that year. And then uh, week five was their second home game. That was against the Oilers. Okay. Little backstory for the twin, for those here in the Twin Cities. They didn't televise the game here in the Twin Cities. It was blacked out. We had to listen to it on the radio. So any highlights I saw of that game, I had to see on the news or read in the newspaper. Um, and that probably sucked because they destroyed the Oilers. And they put up 51 points. <laughs> 51 to 10. Yeah, they put up 51 points on the Houston Oilers. Um, you know, so it's, you're, you're kind of like, okay, they put a 51 on Houston. The offense clicked on all cylinders that day. Uh, even Tarkenton targeted through an 80 yard TD pass to, a uh, John Gilliam. John first, it was the first touchdown of the game. John Gilliam, 80 yard touchdown pass yep. from Tarkenton. Yep. And then, uh, Oilers answered with a skip Butler, 49 yard field goal. Okay. Fred Cox, 42 yard field goal. Then Stu Voigt, 10 yard pass. Ed Marinero, one yard rush, Chuck Foreman, six yard rush. Then the Oilers scored again. Uh two yard rush from Vic Washington. And then it was Chuck Foreman, 24 yard pass, Steve Craig, 10 yard pass, and then Sam McCollum, 20 yard pass. So Bob Barry scored the last two touchdowns with the Vikings. Oh yeah, Bob Barry did play. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Dan Pastorani was 16 of 32 for four in his, and he had four interceptions. Oh, Pastorini? Yeah. Yeah. The Willie Rogers had 42 yards rushing, and Billy Johnson, who we just talked about, had 52 yards receiving. That was it. They, yeah, they, they had a they had a total of 185 yards. The Vikings had a total of 502 yards that game. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Uh, I mean, it was already four and zero, and people were already saying, "Was Houston that? Was Houston really that bad that year? They were that bad. They were the Houston. That era of Houston Oilers football was not good." Was not good at all. Um, they turned it around in '75. They got Bum Phillips, and I think they were like ten and four. That's Wes Phillips' granddad. For those who, yeah, the guy who just got suspended. Yep. Yeah, it's Wes Phillips' granddad, and um, they uh, they turned it around, and then they were they had one bad year in '76, but they were competitive the rest of the time. And then when you got Earl Campbell, that's when they were real competitive. Well, then was that seventy eight? Yeah, 
they got Orkan was 70. So from 78 to 80, they were the thorn in Steelers' side. But then after they lost to the Raiders in a wild card in 80, they fired Bum Phillips. And the team went down, and they were just miserable yeah. after that until they until got moved. They, moon. Got, until they, they got, got moved. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, so they Tark- were they were not good. Um so Tarkington was 18 and 24 for 274 yards and three touchdowns. Did he throw any interceptions? No. Okay. Uh the Vikings, I don't think had any the Vikings had no turnovers. Mm. Uh Bob Barry was eight of twelve for 77 yards, two touchdowns. Okay. Mike Eschheld was one for one for six yards. Mike Eyeshide? Eyeshide, yeah. He was a punter. Well, he was one for one for six yards. They faked a punt. <laughs> uh, so Chuck Foreman, 16 carries, 62, 61 yards, four receptions, 63 yards. Billy, Bill Brown, uh, six rushes, 24. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see, Ed Manero, four, car- four carries, five yards. John Gilliam, John Gilliam, one for nine. Dave Osborne, three for 10. McCallahan, three for 13. Uh, John Gillum had two receptions for 102 yards. Um, and yeah, Stu Voigt, five for 41. Lash, two for 39. King Ryder, one for 21. Steve Craig, one for two for 14. Nate yeah. Wright. The King's Nate, Writer, was it? Nate, Did you say Nate, Nate Wright caught a pass? Nate, Nate Wright won for six. That must have been the fuck that must have been the fake. That punt. must have been the punt. Yeah. You see what happens when they don't televise the game? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh so um so Amos Martin had a pick, Jeff Simeon, Jeff Seaman had a pick. Okay. Jack Jackie Wallace had a pick. Nate Wright had a pick. Okay. Uh, Billy Johnson had three kickoff returns for 57 yards. Mm-hmm. There was no uh, uh, kick returns for the Vikings, two for 37 for McCallahan. I want to say the Vikings blocked a field goal attempt. Alan Page did. Uh, field goals attempted, two field goals made, one. It doesn't say anything about it being blocked, but it, he was one of two. Butler was one of two? Yeah. That means that that other one was blocked, because that made that was like on the highlight reels. Um, the ball it was blocked, it was knocked in the air, and it about three Vikings had their hands on it, and um, Jackie Wallace scored, but I don't think they counted it. Um, I think they said he lateraled it forward or something like that, that but nice. I don't think they counted. But uh, Alan Page did block a field goal. I use I use them both sites. Uh, Wiki sometimes they both they have different information. Let's see the Wikipedia says that. No, Davey, we didn't play the Giants in '74. Um, played the Cardinals instead. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's see. So the. So technically, we could have put up 50, 58 points. Yeah. Uh, let's see, let me go get a game. Here we go. I forget both websites are set up way differently. So, mm-hmm. um, which one are you looking at now? I am looking at Wikipedia now to see if that block punt, block, block, block extra field, but that block field goal comes up on their stats. Okay. Um, let me see. All right, so Tarkington, New York Pass. Uh, skip, skip. Fourth quarter. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about the block to get down here either. Okay, yeah, that's. I'm sure. I'm sure it happened, but it doesn't mm-hmm. say anything about it. Which is kind of you would think it would, but. Yeah, that was. That was, and that was Alan Page that did that. Alan Page is the one to block that kick. Which Alan Page blocked a lot of kicks. A lot of people don't realize that he blocked. Was it seventy-seven, something like that? Who's that? Forty. You know, it was forty. God, what do you? He had like not seventy-seven, but he leads like in it. Then he like lead the NFL in blocks and fumble recoveries for like the longest time. Yeah, he did. 
He's got well, Marshall had 29 fumble recoveries for the longest for like years. Yeah. And I don't think anybody's even broke that record. Uh Matt Blair blocked in his career. I want to say Matt Blair blocked like maybe six more kicks than Allen did. But Well, Yogi was born in a bicentennial year. Yeah. So, he, oh, so Skip Butler was a straight on kicker as well, huh? Yes, he was straight. Was he straight on? Let me think. He might. Yeah, I think so. He was like the last of a dying breed. Um, most of the kickers were uh, becoming soccer style. Davy, the back-to-back -back losses were to the Rams and Patriot, or uh, the Lions and Patriots, and then the Packers and Rams. So that's um, yeah. So the next. So going going to that. So after the after the Oilers game, the Vikings are five and zero. Um, so their next game is a loss to the Lions. To the Lions, the first time the Lions had beat us in like thirteen tries. Um, they hadn't beat us in thirteen tries, and they they beat us what twenty to sixteen. 20 to 16. They scored late. Um, we couldn't mount an offensive drive at the end there, and we lost. And Rick Forzano got carried off the field by the Lions. Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> yeah. Ain't that a bitch? And then, so we lose that game. So we're what, five and one? And then the next week, we got the New England Patriots, who were five and one also. With Jim Plunkett as their starting quarterback, um, hard-fought game. Patriots were leading for the, most of the game. Um, now this is a game. It's I found it on YouTube. It is on YouTube. This is a game where Fran Tarkenton got in a fist fight with Ron Bolton of the Patriots. What happened was, and I don't know what led up to it. It was late in the game. Fran scored a touchdown. At the time, it was the go-ahead touchdown. Fran scores. Okay. As soon as he gets in the end zone, it's almost like, I don't know if Bolton said something to him. He didn't. It didn't look like he touched him. Fran turns around, throws the ball into Bolton's back, which starts a fight. Um, Tarkington got into it with Bolton, and then uh, Prentice McCray jumped in, and then Mick Tinglehoff and Ed Marinero jumped in for the Vikings. It got, it was, it was a fight. It was a legit fight. Um, they had to pause the game for a minute, but the Vikings had to lead there. And Davey, this is the this is a trivia question for you. It wasn't Russ Francis. Both Patriot TD passes, plunk it through to a tight end named Bob Windsor. And the game winner was the last play of the game where he hit Windsor over the middle. And the uh, Patriots won, what was it, 17 to 14? Uh, let's see. It was 1714. Uh, they scored 17 uh, scored 14 points in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Patriots were the Patriots were had been like dominating that whole game. Funny thing is, Windsor never I don't think Windsor caught another pass after that touchdown. I don't think he I don't think he even played. I think he got hurt. Um, yeah, I think it's the same Windsor. Um, but there was some story about he caught the last he caught the game winner. And then they said he never played another down or he got hurt or something. I don't I don't remember what the story is with Windsor, but yeah, it was Bob Windsor that beat us that day. 
Um, but that's where the injuries started to pick up. Uh, Roy Winston got hurt. Matt Blair was starting to get more playing time at, you know, then. Um, they moved Ron, They moved Ed White over to the right side of the offensive line next to Ron Yeary, which is where his, his Pro Bowl run started. Um, the left side was pretty bad. Uh, Chuck Goodrum was on the – was playing tackle. Steve Lawson – the guy we talked about was playing guard. He was splitting time with Andy Maurer. Um, the only steady on the offensive line was uh, Tinglehoff, Ed White, and Ron Yeary. Um, Gary Larson started to play with injuries. Well, he was slowly being replaced by uh, Doug Sutherland. Um, so the Patriots actually have a story about Bob Windsor. Um, it says the majority of Patriot fans may not recall the 74 season. Uh, granted, a large portion of fans weren't even alive, and the season was, by all accounts, mediocre by Patriot standards. <laughs> Man, you guys are so full of yourselves that you guys are great. Yeah, you are. <laughs> are, you on, are you on Wikipedia? No, I'm on NFL.com. Um, <laughs> the, the team didn't win the Super Bowl, a conference title, or a division title. Did even make the playoffs? Um and it says so far the franchise is, you know, it talks about that. Mm -hmm. uh, this is for a one October game in Minnesota where tight end Bob Windsor made one of the greatest catch, greatest and gutsiest plays in New England sports history. Uh, prior, you know, prior to the 74 season, we all know how bad the Patriots were. Mm -hmm. uh, he was traded from San Fran. Um, and it says uh, they were a bad team when they, when they, when he got traded. I'm trying to, uh, and then they hired Oklahoma's coach. It's just talking about. Um, I'm trying to get to the story. Yeah. Um, let me see. Fairbanks. Uh, yeah, so the biggest, Fairbanks biggest test coach. for the Patriots came the following week as they went on the road to face Fran Tarkenton's Vikings, who were also 5 and 1 and coming off a Super Bowl appearance the previous season. The Vikings were heavy favorites despite the identical record. Uh, trail 10 7 and a two minute warning, but Tarkenton led them back on a quick 74 yard drive that capped off a three yard touchdown scramble. Uh, Tarkenton scored with under a minute and a half remaining and then got ejected. Yep, for the fight. Um, him and Patriots defensive back Ron Bolton for rough for a rough housing in the end zone, Hobson recalled. Uh, but everyone thought, uh, what difference does it make? We figured that it was, and we are going to start to head down evidence, uh, down the elevator of the locker room. So, uh, do they win that game? Tarkenton doesn't get ejected, who knows, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, so uh, Nugent still had hope, but they needed a big play fast. Uh, Vataha provided one, hauling in a 55-yard bomb from Plunkett to the Vikings' 10-yard 10 yard, 10 yard line. Uh, 10 yard line. The following, uh, following incompletion by Vataha, the Patriots were left with eight seconds, no timeouts, and the last chance to pull off the upset. Uh, with the Minnesota defense focused on Vataha, Windsor uh, was called upon to make a play. Uh, and he says, uh, Jim looked to Randy, checked off him, and hit me right up the middle near the goal line. Windsor re recollected. Uh, Paul Krause came from the safety and hit me, and I knew immediately my right leg was done. So I kept it in the air, spun, and pushed off with my left leg and used my last breath to throw myself in the end zone, hoping I would get there. This picture is pretty gnarly of his right leg. Um, I saw it. I saw it when it happened. As I as I lay there, I could hear the crowd yelling, and then Sam Cunningham and Todd Neville and everybody was jumping on me, uh, telling me I got in. And I said, "Yeah, but what about my knee? It's killing me." Like his the the way that his leg is bent is just mm -hmm. tough. Uh, Windsor had not was not only hit, but he was twisted and dragging the guy fighting the extra yards. He gave it everything he had in that play. Some Viking players were less impressed by Windsor's heroics, but they couldn't <laughs> take the win away from the Patriots. Uh, so they carried him off the field, and it, um, it says, when you arrived back at the Logan Airport, the team was graded. Okay, it says, it was wonderful. I don't know if it was expected. Okay. So, but yeah, you could tell it was his leg injury. It, it's pretty, if you guys get a chance to look it up. Um, yeah, um, it said, unfortunately, the rest of the season failed to live up to high expectations following Winter's heroics as a rash of injuries caused him to drop six of the remaining games. Yeah, uh, but while Windsor was in the rest of the set, where the night of storybook ending, his legend of a memory game-winning uh, effort lived on. 
Um, yeah. Uh, so he didn't do – that was it for him. Yeah, that was his last – that was it. That was it. That was, that it. was it. That's what I yeah. thought. Yeah, he was done. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's – I mean, back then, if you had an injury like that, especially how his leg looked, you were yeah. you were done. There, Like nowadays, I mean, hell, uh, Alex Smith pretty much lost his leg. Teddy Bridgewater pretty much lost Teddy his leg. Teddy Bridgewater, yeah. Back. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's I mean Yeah. Yeah, I remember when it happened. I was just like, damn. I had never seen that happen to the Vikings. Never. Well, no, I take that back. We lost to the Niners in 72 that same type of way, but I can actually going back to that, I can Tarkington is not Tarkington was a, a Tarkington kind of a dick. <laughs> he was a cocky, arrogant SOB. He, he would still fight. Is. He still is to this day. Yeah, he would fight. He was kind of like he was like a. I mean, you're the greatest Viking quarterback of all time, but you never come around, only on special occasions. Well, he, it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> he's not coming up here unless he's not coming up here unless it's like seventy degrees. Boy, he's also the uh, all-time interception leader. No one ever talks about that. Yeah, he's still got all the... anybody ever talks about is Rod Woodson. It's like hello. And Woodson's what ten? He's, uh, I think I think Woodson has like seventy-five or something like that. Yeah, so Woodson didn't even stick around long enough to break yeah. it. You know. Well, Woodson played in the. Well, Woodson did other things too. Paul just played center field. <laughs> you know, that's all he had to do. He had to front. Yeah, you've got a front seven like we had, and Paul will even tell you this: your job is easy. You know, and they used to get on Paul. He didn't tackle. And he's like, well, guess what? I made 14 tackles in a Super Bowl. For yeah. me to have to make that many Super Bowl, that many tackles. Something's going wrong. Something's going wrong up on the, at the line of scrimmage. So uh, going back to the Lions game, we were talking about they haven't beat the Lions. The Lions, first time the Lions beat them in a while. So after the 67 season, the Lions. So going into 1968, the Lions led the all-time series 9-5-2. By the time they met, by the time they met in, um, uh, by the time they met in '74, mm -hmm. uh, it and the the Lions won. It was uh, Vikings sixteen to ten, and two. Yeah, and it's and been... then did the Vikings the Lions beat them again in '75, mm -hmm. and then it that made it series seventeen eleven, and by the time the '80s, by the time the '70s ended, it was twenty four. 12 to 2. The Vikings. Yep. And then uh in the 80s, the Vikings uh 13 is with Vikings went 13 and 6. Okay. So the Vikings, so that was the first time the Lions did beat them in a long time because they didn't beat the Vikings, actually. They tied them a lot. So yeah, they did in, in the early going. So yeah. Mm -hmm. But that, that goes back to the theme because they lost their first two preseason games and then they lost two in a row to the Lions and to the Patriots. Mm -hmm. And so the next week uh, was the Bears. Yeah, and they shut them out, 17 to nothing. Shut it was out. it was really bad weather. Um, really, it was windy and raining. Uh, the Bears were the Bears. Um, they shut it them out. 52 degrees. 83% humidity, so it, it's you know, raining. It, and then winds were 13 miles an hour. Yeah, sometimes they were gusting worse. In the stadium, it was worse than that um, because they had that swirling, that swirling type of wind. But, yeah, the Vikings got to shut out, and uh, you didn't have to do much on offense because, you know, and the Bears were so bad they brought Bobby Douglas in to start. Well, that didn't yeah. help anything either. The – so Gary Huff was 11 of 24 for 74 yards. And Bobby Douglas was four for 17. Um, they held the Bears to 158 yards. 100 of it was net passing yards. Mm -hmm. uh, so I mean, Tarkington was only 9 of 18 for 80 yards, but he didn't do much because Dave didn't Osborne, much. Dave Osborne, 24 carries, 98 yards. Chuck Foreman, 21 carries, 80 yards. Osborne stepped into the starting lineup. He, uh, they they went from Oscar Reed to Ed Marinero 
to Dave Osborne, but could count on Osborne. And so um, In the, Osborne became a starter. The scoring was Fred Cox, 23-yard field goal, John Gillum, 35-yard pass, and then Stu Voigt, 40 pass. Does it say how many sacks the Vikings got there? Uh, let me see. So Tarkenton was sacked once. Mm -hmm. Huff and Douglas were each sacked once. Hmm. So they only had two. But they each, but Douglas and Huff also threw a pick. Yeah, I know Matt Blair had one. So they had three turnovers. The Vikings had two turnovers. Uh, Tarkenton threw an interception. Uh, so Matt Blair had a pick. Jeff Voigt. Jeff, sorry, Jeff Wright had a pick. Okay. Craig Clemens had the one for the Bears. Okay. Yeah, it was what's what was the date on that game? Uh that was November third. Yeah, just after my just after my eighth birthday. Start time was two PM. That's weird. Was it two PM or one PM? It says two PM on here. It was probably so maybe 1 maybe one PM local. It was 1 p.m. Central Time, but it was 2 p.m. Well, the game used to start <coughs> at 1. So even – even so even like, – like now they start at noon to get the 1 o'clock kickoff on the East Coast. So back then they started off at 1, whether it was Central Time or not. Right. Here's the thing. If a, Usually when the game started, because like you would have like the pregame going, right? There would be a game being played. If a game started at noon on the East Coast, Minnesota's game wouldn't start until 1, so yeah. we got the pregame, or we got another game on another channel and watched it. It was um, it was weird how they did it. All the times were local. So say the Vikings are playing on the West Coast, then those games would be at like eh, three o'clock still because they would always play the West Coast games at after at noon or later. Um, and then, but of course, if you you know when you play a game here at like one o'clock here, it's eleven o'clock on the West Coast. So, but yeah, for years. Um, I don't think the NFL was in sync with the numbers. They finally did that in the 80s, but the numbers, they were off at starting times, you know. Yeah, so that, that game, there's a lot of ugly games in the 70s. I'm just going to say that. Well, they, you know, it's kind of, I mean, the year before they got rid of the blackout rule. They, they put in the blackout rule, so, you know, you were able to see home games. Unfortunately, we couldn't sell out the Houston game, so we didn't we didn't see the Houston game. And later on in the year, we didn't see the Atlanta game, which was on a Saturday. So we missed two games that year that were that were home games for the Vikings. Uh so the next next game was against the Cardinals. Monday night football. And the Cardinals, they were good. The, the that game had me worried. Um, historically, the Vikings they never were played that. Both teams, the Vikings were seven and two going into that game. The Cardinals were seven and one. Don Coriel was head coach. Yep, that was the start of that was a, and they were that was what he did. What he did, what did what Don Coriel did in San Diego. He did it first in St. Louis with um, Jim Hart. Jim Hart. Uh, Mel Gray, J.V. Kane, you had uh, Terry Metcalf running back, Jim Otis. People forget about Jim Otis. Um, you had Earl Thomas as a wide receiver. Wow. The defense was pretty decent. You had Roger Worley. And, so um, Jim Hart almost completed as many passes as Tarkenton threw. I believe it. So Jim Tarkenton was 14 to 29 for 137 yards. Mm-hmm. Jim Hart was 28 of 43 for 353. Yep. Yep. So the score went Dave Osborne, one yard rush, mm -hmm. JV Kane, 40 yard pass, from, uh, then John Gillum, 10 yard pass, Jim Baker, 40 yard field, 46 yard field goal, Earl Thomas, 12 yard pass. Yep. Chuck Foreman, 13 yard rush, Fran Tarkenton, 11 yard rush, Jim Hart, four yard rush. 
Yeah, they were competitive. They were competitive. We held on and won it, but they were competitive. Um, the Vikings were three point favorites. So yeah. They covered. Yeah, and they covered. But uh, so total yards, Vikings had 304. Mm -hmm. Cardinals had 436. That sounds like a game today. That that was the precursor. That was that was Don Coriel. That was Don Coriel. So those those numbers that he put up in that game were common numbers when he got to the Chargers. You know, it was he's the one that he basically uh made Dan Fouts the quarterback that he was, you know. And Jim Hart, Jim Hart was a good quarterback. Jim oh, yeah. Hart was a good quarterback. And then uh so uh, Dave Osborne, 23 rushes, 98 yards. Uh, George uh, George Foreman. <laughs> Chuck Foreman, 13 rushes for 68 yards. Oscar mm -hmm. Reed, one for one. And then uh, Stu Voigt was leading receiver, 27. Uh, uh, other than Dave Os So Dave Osborne had 23 yard, uh, 98 yards rushing, mm -hmm. 71 yards receiving. What did Foreman have for receptions? 20. How many catches? Three. So they were keying on him. So the game plan was Osborne. They probably used Foreman as a decoy. They well, and at at that time, the Vikings' biggest offensive threat was Chuck Foreman. Yeah, he was just tearing up the league up to then, and they found a way to defense him. Um, I don't know who their Coriel took over. Bob Holloway had got fired as the uh, head coach of the Cardinals. The former Viking D D coordinator. He had the head coaching job in St. Louis, but whoever the D coordinator was, he 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 shut down. He neutralized Chuck, uh, Chuck Foreman. Yeah. So uh, so Otis, uh, fourteen attempts rushing, fifty yards. Terry Mac Terry Metcalf at eight rushes for twenty nine yards, and Donnie Anderson two for twelve. But uh, Metcalf had five receptions for fifty yards. Donnie Anderson was still playing, huh? Uh, Donnie Anderson, yep. And then. Uh, Mel Gray, six catches, 91 yards. Okay. Jackie Smith, six for 84. Jackie Smith, is that the same guy that dropped the touchdown? That's the same one that dropped the touchdown. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's Talk the same this. one that dropped the touchdown. Oh, he dropped the touchdown. Oh, no, the horror. <laughs> <laughs> it never did the Cowboys. I, I kind of. Oh, come on, guys. I, I, I'm truly humbled by you guys. Thank Seriously. you, no stop. Thank God, you. I can't. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to get a running total with the Yogi. Oh my gosh. Thank you, no stop. Thank you so much, man. Yep. Yeah, he does. That's why I wish the Vikings would have hired him as the head coach. They're going to regret they didn't. And then I um, do, I do think they're going to regret they didn't. And then uh, Terry uh, for the defense, Terry Brown had a pick. Uh, Clarence Terry, and Terry Brown was a Cardinal at one time, I believe. Uh, Clarence Duran had a pick as well. Oh, Duran. Yeah. Okay. Eric, does it say how many times? Terry Metcalf, was that Eric Metcalf's uncle or dad? That's his dad. Okay. That's his dad. Does it say how many times Hart was sacked? Uh, Hart was sacked twice. Okay. See, we're not, we weren't getting a lot of pressure on the quarterback that year. I think that was one of the years where we didn't put a lot of, a lot of pressure on quarterbacks. We did, oh, but we didn't get a lot of Call uh, Call Eller, Sutherland, Page, Marshall, they're all there. Mm -hmm. Bear, Matt Blair, Sim, uh, Seaman, Hillenberg, Nate Wright, Jeff Wright, Brown, and Krause were the, were the starters on defense. Yeah, and Brown was splitting time with Jackie Wallace. Yeah, you're right, Davey. Nate Wright was a Cardinal. So was John Gilliam. Yeah, we both we got them both from the Cardinals. So after the Cardinals, who did we have? So after the Cardinals, okay. So after the Cardinals, how the hell did they do this? It's, they go back to back to back losses again. Green Bay. Mm -hmm. They lost the, in Green Bay. That was uh, <laughs> the uh, John Hadle. 
Green, they don't, Green Bay was five and five. They put, yeah, I put, I put Green Bay at five and five after the game. It was nineteen to seven. Yep. Yeah, uh, it so was nineteen to seven. Um, Chester, Chester what was that Mark Cole? He had he had four straight field goals. Twenty. Uh, so no scoring in the first quarter. He had two field goals for in the second quarter, twenty eight and thirty one yards. He had a field goal in the third quarter. It was the only scoring. This is the only scoring so far. So mm-hmm. The Packers had a nine nothing lead, and then they had a twelve nothing lead when Mark when he had so he had four straight field goals, and then Chuck Foreman got a twenty four yard pass to make it twelve seven, and then McArthur Lane a sixty eight yard pass from John Hadle. Yeah, they beat a blitz. They beat a Viking blitz, and McArthur Lane was well on his way. Yeah, that was. Uh, so each quarterback got sacked twice. Okay. Uh, Green Bay had 393 total yards. The Vikings had 284. They each had one turn. Uh, Vikings had two turnovers. Green Bay only had one. How many yards did Foreman have rushing? Uh, Foreman only had 39 yard rushing. What did Osborne have? Uh, Osborne didn't have any. Oscar Reed had 10. So the they each, so the Vikings only carried the ball 20 times total. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chuck Foreman 39 yards. Oscar Reed 35. They had no Jim, game. Jim Lash had the big game, six catches, 136 yards. And they only got they only scored seven points. Uh-huh. Jeez. I remember that game, and I remember my dad was in a bad mood. Brockington, <laughs> Brockington had 32 carries for 137 yards. That's why they didn't score very many because it seemed like Green Bay had the ball. He was Brockington was their uh their workhorse. Brockington would, Brockington would have stayed with the Packers, but he had a falling out with Bart Starr. Um, he does not have time of possession on here. But I imagine the coach. I imagine if he runs the ball 32 times, they had the ball for the. You know what? Hang on. Let me see something. I might have the time of possession here. Al, Al Matthews had the pick for the Packers. He returned at 32 yards. Um. The Vikings didn't have a didn't have a pick. No, not that game. They had two sacks though. And then the next week we go to the Rams and lose again. <laughs> yeah. So that was November seventeenth, nineteen seventy four. Um, what was the weather? The weather was thirty three degrees, wind chill of twenty six. Oh, for the Packer game? Yeah. Yeah, it was cold. It was well, cold. Vikings are favored by 10. Yeah, because the Packers were not a very good team. They were not a very and good team. That was team. a home game, too. Yeah, and it was a home game. Well, okay. Home games between the Packers and Vikings don't really mean anything because even back then, you still had a bunch of Packer fans in the stands. Yeah. You know. But yeah, it's it was a uh, you know, but there was a there was a chicken to Viking armor, as they say. Um, That's weird. They had a better road record than a home record. Who's that? The Vikings. Yeah, they lost uh, three games at home that year. Yeah, they lost. They, yeah, the the, uh, the the Lions game, the Patriots game were all were at home, mm-hmm. and the Rams game. Uh, sorry, the uh, the Packers game. Uh, was on the uh, was on the was a home game. Yeah, that that stretch in the early part of the season, the uh, Oilers, Lions, and Patriots was a three game homestand. The Vikings lost two or three. Yeah, they lost the last two. Yeah, they and then they two. went on the road, won two in a row, mm-hmm. come back home and lose. <laughs> yeah, and then they lose. Did they go to L.A. Mm-hmm. and they lose in L.A.? That game was close. All that game could have went either way. Um, you know, Chuck was our only offense. We just, but the the Rams were, the Rams were a better team than the Vikings. Let's be honest. I'm beyond. Vikings got all their points in one quarter. Yeah, the Rams and the Rams just kept fighting. Uh, James Harris was a quarterback for the Rams. Yeah, so no right. scoring in the first quarter. Right. Uh, Fred Cox, thirty-six yard field goal in the second. Mm-hmm. Chuck Foreman, one yard rush, in the second. 
James Harris, one yard rush for the Rams, and the Chuck Foreman 12 yard pass from Tarkington. That, that was 17 to 6 at halftime. Yep. And then James Harris, a one yard rush. And then Jack Snow, an eight yard uh, reception. Yeah, that was at the end. Of, that was towards the end of the game. Right. We we could the Rams we, were actually favored. Yeah, they were the home team. They were the home team. I think they were only yeah. favored by three, weren't they? Uh, they were favored by one and a half. One and a half. Yeah. So basically, it was without saying toss up. Yeah. So the Vikings were sacked. Uh, Carkington was sacked once. Uh, we did not get a sack on Harris. We hit him a lot, but we didn't get no sacks. He was the a backup, big guy. The backup quarterback for the Rams? Ron Jaworski. Yep. Yep. Did Jaworski play in this game? Yep. He had one 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 pass for uh he had one pass completion for 19 yards. Okay. He had one he had one rushing attempt. So Harris must have got hurt or something, must have been out for a couple of plays. I think Harris got knocked out of the game for a brief second. Um, I think he, I want to say he got hit by Sutherland. James Harris was 6'4, 210. Yeah. So you went from Roman Gabriel, who was 6'5, to James Harris, who was 6'4. Smallest quarterback they had at that time was John Hadle. <laughs> and then they go and get five foot nothing Pat Hayden. I mean,. I don't know what the I don't know what Rosenblum was thinking. Yeah, Tarkington did not have a very good game. He was nineteen of thirty-five. You know, Tark. There was there were times where Tarkington just didn't look good at all, and there were a couple of games that year where he just you were kind of like his, you know, he's his age is starting to show. Um, that was kind of the theme with the whole damn Viking team. The age had caught up with them. Um. So yeah, so what are they now? There was six and four. Uh, no stop. We usually don't allow guests on this show unless it's a special circumstance. We might have a trivia night one night. Mm -hmm. We could have Davy Chains and all the old school guys come on. But usually, this is the one show we usually don't have guests guests come on just because of the four, the way it's. I don't have because I'm doing the hosting and all the production, so I am reading stories. As you can see, I'm barely keeping up with chat. I'm reading stories. And, and all that type of stuff. And I'm doing, yeah. So Tony's just here to spit his knowledge. He doesn't do anything on the production side. <laughs> no, I just talk. <laughs> I just talk. Uh, That's all yeah. I do. So what are what are the Vikings now? They're like six and four, right? So, let's see. So, as, um, so after the Rams game, um, going in. So they are seven and four after the Rams game. Seven and four? Yeah. Okay. So they don't they don't lose again the rest of the season. No, they was the Saints next? Uh it was the Saints, yes. They dominated the Saints. That was 23 to 9. 23 to was sorry, 20, 29, 29 to 9. 29 to 9. That was yeah. uh they they basically beat up Archie Manning. Um that was uh that was one of those games where uh, they got it together on offense. Archie Manning was 9 of 18 for 100 yards. He was sacked three times for 29 yards. Mm -hmm. He got hit more than that. Yeah. And then Bob, Bobby Scott was the backup. And then uh, Alvin Maxson. Alvin Maxson, yeah. 10 rushes, 98 yards. He almost got 100 yards, huh? And then Bob Newman was the only guy – Two receptions, 51 yards. Yeah, they couldn't throw the ball. Yeah. So the total yards was 226 for the Saints, 405 for Minnesota. So Dave Osborne, two yard rush. Uh, Bill McClard, 27 yard field goal. Alvin Maxson, one yard rush. Stu Voigt, four yard pass. Fred Cox, 25 yard field goal. John Gilliam, 13. John Gilliam, 13 yard pass, and then a 22 yard pass. Okay. Perception. Yeah, so we got so they're. I think they won the division that game too. They clinched the division with that win. So they're eight and four. Right. And then uh, let's see, I don't think there was any. I don't think there. Yeah, there was no interceptions in that game mm -hmm. for either team. I don't think there was, I, there was I one think turnover. There was one one turnover. 
Davey, I think Abramowitz had went to the 49ers. I think Abramowitz was a 49er. I'll find out right now. <laughs> Abramowitz is not on the roster for the for the Saints. Yeah, he had been traded. Um, yeah, he was a Niner. He was a Niner. Um, yeah, that Saints team was. I don't even know who their head coach was. Uh, North. I have no idea who that is. John North. <laughs> yeah, still have no idea who that is. <laughs> Uh, I imagine if he was a head coach of the Saints that he was not. Uh, I bet he was an interim. Uh, he was a head coach of the Saints for three years, 73, 74, 75, and he was 11 and 23. Saints were bad. He got fired uh, halfway through the 75 season. They were one and five. He got fired. Yeah, he was. He was. Those Saints teams were horrible. They were horrible. The um, Saints overall. Uh, let me see. From that time period, for those three years, they were twenty six and forty six. Yeah, they were bad. They were bad. Yep, they were horrendous. Their win percentage. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Yeah. Um, yeah. The win. No, sorry, that's their win percentage. <laughs> so their win percentage was twenty five percent. Mm. And their team's rank was fifth. Was uh, by the way, they have it listed here. It's kind of like the numbers are here and the letters are here, so it's kind of. But yeah, but they're, yeah, they're, they were bad. They were twenty five percent win percent. Yeah, twenty five percent win percent as the head coach. Yeah, they were terrible. Three twenty four as the head coach. Uh, as his win percentage, that's pretty bad. Yeah, um, they were bad. Oh, and here's the funny part. So now you beat the Saints, right? Then the next week. Yeah, 29 to 9, they beat the Saints. Yep. So. And then the next week on a Saturday afternoon, you're playing the Atlanta Falcons. Yep. Um, that was a Saturday game. That was the other game that was blacked out here in the Twin Cities. So whatever I heard, I had to hear on the radio. But Dave Osborne was kind of the workhorse that game. Um the Vikings won yeah, Saturday, December seventh at uh yeah. one PM. Yep. Falcons the first, two and eleven. The first of two Saturday games. The first yeah, two, uh Cowboys and Cleveland played the other. Right. But the Vikings for two weeks in a row played on a Saturday to end the season in seventy four. Um how many yards did Osborne have rushing? Uh, so Osborne um, had Osborne had 24 carries for 96 yards. Ed Marinero had 11 for 43. Chuck didn't play, huh? Chuck had four for seven, two for and he had two receptions for 18 yards. Okay. Okay. I just think the game was. I mean, I imagine the time of possession was because mm-hmm. <laughs> they only the Falcons only had. So total yards includes, I think, I don't know if total yards includes. Total yards Falcons. would be net passing. They take away from right. sacks and rushing. So the net passing yards was 75. How many times was he sacked? He was sacked four times for 50 yards. Oh, that was Kim McQuilkin. I remember that much. Yeah. Davey, the game you're thinking of, they played in 75. That was a downpour here in Minneapolis. The Vikings beat them 38 to nothing. Yep. That was yeah. 75. And yeah. Tarkington did not play that game. No, Bob Barry played. Bob Barry was left 14 to 22 for 114 yards, one touchdown, one sack, one interception. Yeah, Bob uh Fran, he's he sat Fran uh he sat Fran because we're heading into the playoff stretch. And it was yeah. it was Atlanta. So <laughs> yeah, Kim McQuellen McCuffin was the was the was the quarterback. Uh uh Art Malone, 54 yards rushing. Dave Hampton, 54 yards rushing. Uh, Ken Burrow, 50 yards receiving. That was pretty much it. Yeah. The longest play of the day was 13 yards for the Falcons. Yeah, that was – if you ever see the highlight reel, they show um, that's a game where basically he the Vikings had the five-man line in there and 
Kim McCorkin got hit by everybody. <laughs> the wind chill was 19 degrees. Yeah, it was it was December. It was December in Minnesota. You know? And it was 23 to 10 was the score. Yep. And that was on a Saturday. It was blacked out here in the Twin Cities. So didn't so see Dave, it. Dave Osborne, 10 yard rush. Art Malone, one yard rush. Fred Cox, 21 yard field goal. Dave Osborne, five yard rush. Uh, Nick Mike Mayer. Nick Mike Mayer. Uh, 60, 36 yard field goal. And then Stu Voigt, 10 yard. Uh, 10 yard uh, reception. There were two. Now there were two Nick Myers kicking in the 70s. Uh, Nick Mike Mayer and Steve Mike Mayer. Um, Nick was with the uh, Falcons. Steve was with the 49ers. So, but yeah, um, so we're what nine and four, and then we end the season in Kansas. City. I don't know. I don't see Davey. I don't know if you're the geezer in the group or not because we don't know everybody's ages in here. I know Tony is older than me, so I'm but, 57. Yeah, so I don't know how old everybody is in here. I'm 48, yeah. so. Yeah, I don't know if you're the geezer or not. I think Bob Sweet's pretty old. I could be wrong, but I think Bob's a couple of years younger than me. Yeah. But we played the we played the Chiefs last game of the year. And uh, yeah, the Chiefs oh, yeah. game, the Chiefs game was not close. No. That was uh 35 13. 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah, 1 5. Yep. 35 15. Um Saturday, uh, Sam, well. McCollum, Sam McCollum had two touchdowns. I know that much. Uh, Hank Strand was still the head coach. Fucking dick. And I think he got. I think that was his last game as a Chiefs coach. I think he got fired. So, uh, Jan Stenderud, thirty-seven yard field goal. Jan Stenderud, thirty-two yard field goal. Sam McCollum, thirty-four yard touchdown reception. McCollum, ten yard touchdown reception. Emmett Thomas. 73 yard interception return. Okay. Ed Marinero, seven yard touchdown pass uh, catch. Jan Stidiru, 20 yard, yard field goal. Oscar Reed, three yard. And McCallahan with a six yard rush. Oh, wow. Oscar Reed played. Yeah. Um, Jeez. Total uh, two, two turnovers for the Minnesota, three for Kansas City. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was hard, uh, one sack for the Chiefs. They sacked the Viking quarterback once. The Vikings got the KC uh, quarterback five times. Lynn Dawson got sacked three times. Dean Carlson got sacked twice. Alan Page had two sacks on Dawson. He almost had a safety on one of them. Um, yeah, but they didn't keep they didn't keep sacks that back then. Yeah, Page Page almost got him twice. Yeah, Fran Tarkenton did play this game, uh, but Bob Berry also played. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oscar Reed, thir- fifteen uh, rushes, fifty-seven yards. Six for six catches, 37 yards. Yep. Uh, does not look like uh, Chuck Foreman played. Um, Ed Marinero, 12 for 12 uh, rushes for 31 yards. Okay. Uh, Sam, Sam McCollum had six catches for 118 yards, two touchdowns. Yep. And then uh, when uh, looks like uh, Elmo Wright had three catches for 75 yards for Kansas City. Oh, Elmo Wright. My God, I haven't heard that name in years. And then uh, Khalil Miller had 12 catches, had 12 rushes for 46 yards, four catches for 66. And that was pretty much it. Khalil oh, Miller? Khalil Miller, yeah. He ended up with the Browns. If that's the same Khalil Miller I'm thinking of, he ended up with the Browns. I can look at his. Uh, he played one year for Kansas City. And the rest were with Cleveland? Uh, he got traded halfway through the 75 season, and he played the rest of his career with, with uh, Cleveland. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay. Two years to Kansas City, technically a year and a half, but then eight years with Cleveland. So he, yeah. Yeah, so that's, so we finished 10-4, and four, win the division, and the playoffs start, and we got the Cardinals. Yep, and... So the so in the regular season they beat the Cardinals twenty eight twenty four. It was a it, and it was a close it was a game. different it was a different story in the playoffs. Yeah, and that one you can chalk up to uh, the weather. 
You can chalk it up to the weather. Um, it was perfect Viking weather for football. Um, and the Cardinals still played tough. But what uh, Chuck Foreman had had was the Viking offense. The reason I will never live in Minnesota. What was the temperature? 19 degrees with a wind chill of nine. Dude, that's a heat wave. <laughs> that is a heat wave. 19 degrees? Oh, yeah, that's shorts weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's 61 right here, right now. Yeah, that is short. That's shorts weather, especially in December. What was the date of that game? Uh, that was December twenty first, yep, just before Christmas. Yep. And it was uh, so the score: Earl Thomas thirteen yard uh, touchdown reception from Jim Hart, John Gillum 20, sixteen yards from Tarkenton, Fred Cox thirty seven yard field goal, Nate Wright twenty yard fumble return. Uh, John Gillum, 38-yard pass. Chuck Foreman, four-yard rush. And then Terry Metcalf scored at the end. That Nate Ray fumble return was only 20 yards? That's what it says. I thought uh, it was longer than that. Maybe he ran across the field. No, it. Um, Alan Page forced a fumble to Metcalf. The ball came out, and um, he picked it up and just – Ran down the sideline. I always thought it was longer than 20 yards. But uh, so Chuck Foreman had 23 rushes for 114 yards. Yep. Dave Osborne, 16 for 67. And then uh, Chuck Foreman also had five yards, five receptions for 54 yards. We actually, we were running the ball well that game. I remember that much. The yeah. running game was clicking. Tom Gillum had one, well, had one, uh, Rushing for 16 yards. Mm. What, did the sacked, Card- what did the Cardinals do? They sacked Jim Hart twice. Uh, total yards for the Cardinals were 284. I thought they got Jim Hart five times. Uh, they got Jim Hart twice, it says here. Huh. Sacked twice for 16 yards. How many times was Tarkin attacked? Uh, once. Hmm. Uh, Hart only had a faster rating of 58. He was 18 of 40. Yeah, he was uh he was throwing a lot of his passes. That weather doesn't that weather's not conducive to that type of offense. No, it's not. It's not so uh interceptions, uh the um Mark Ar- Mark Arnson. Arnson. Uh, yeah, Roger Werhall. Roger Worley. Yeah, so guy. What's the other name? So, so, and then uh, Jeff Wright had the one for Minnesota. Okay. Other than that scoring one, that uh, that was a fumble. Yeah, that was a fumble. Um, and then uh, nothing really in the kicking game. Uh, Fred Cox makes an extra point. Yeah, that's why it's only thirty. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, kicks return shot Matt Sam McCollum at two for 49. Okay, so okay, yeah, so it looks like they pretty much looks like the game was in a contest. It wasn't, um, it was all Vikings from start to finish. That's why I keep saying I asked you if they only got credit for two sacks because I swear they got more than two. Are you looking I'm at looking, Wikipedia or Pro Football Reference? I'm looking at. I'm getting all the stats of the game from Pro Football Reference. Okay. Because I, I understand that's probably more legit than Wikipedia. Because anybody can make anything on Wikipedia. Well, if I could, because I still got reports from back in the day, and I think I remember them saying that we were they were five sacks. The Vikings got five sacks. Uh, maybe they went back and looked at it. So when you go, yeah, when you go to team stats on here, it just says two sacks. Yeah, I remember reading in the paper, and this was a, the St. Paul paper back then because I used to always like read the old papers that the Vikings had about four or five sacks. 
And I don't have anything here to bring that up. I'm going to see if. You know what? Now I'm curious. Hold on. Um, I'll be right back. Now I'm curious. Hang on. I'll be right back. Yes. season. That's, that's weird because everywhere I'm looking, it says the same thing. See, wherever I need stats, I go to this big old honking book right here. I'll see what they say. Um, hey, Sarah, what's up? Let's see. I pro football reference could be wrong. They're not wrong very often. If it was Wikipedia, I would definitely be saying, you know, let's question it. But let me see. Let me go to Wikipedia, see if it does say anything different. We are fat. We're doing live fact check on air, people. Yeah, that's what we're doing on air. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing it on air because we have some discrepancies in their stats. Okay, let's see. And guess what? Hang on. They don't even have it here for where I'm looking. Yeah, he only got sacked two times. He only got credit for two. Targeted one, and he so, got two. Aided by the Cardinals' turnovers, the Vikings scored 16 points in less than seven minutes in the third quarter on their first possession of the game. St. Louis drove to the 35-yard line but lost the ball on a failed fourth to one conversion attempt. St. Louis eventually got the onto the scoreboard first with quarterback uh, John Hart 13-yard touchdown pass to Earl Thomas. But Minnesota countered when friend Tarkenton completed a 16-yard touchdown pass to John Gilliam. The 7-7 tie would be the last to the end of the half. The Cardinals had a chance to take the lead with 56-yard field goal. With a 56-yard drive to the Vikings' six-yard line, but Jim Baker missed a 23-yard field goal as time expired. On the third play of the second half, Vikings defensive back Jeff Wright intercepted a pass from Hart and returned it 18 yards to set up Cox's 37-yard field goal, giving his team a 10-7 lead. Exactly 60 seconds later on the Cardinals' ensuing drive, Terry Metcalf lost the fumble while being leveled by Vikings lineman Alan Page and Carl Eller. Yep. Corner, cornerback Nick Wright picked up the loose ball and returned it 20 yards for a touchdown that increased the lead to 17-7. A few moments later, Tarkenton finished off his 16-point quarter with a 38-yard touchdown pass to Gillen. His, in, in the fourth quarter, Vikings running back Chuck Foreman, who finished the game with 114 yards rushing and five receptions for 54 yards, recorded a four-yard touchdown run to give the Vikings a 37 lead. By the time Metcalf rushed for 11-yard fourth-quarter touchdown, the game was already out of reach. Yeah, so, it, was, that was, it was completely dominated by the Vikings. Yeah. Um, doesn't have – this doesn't really – does, does, that, does that book have the time of possession? I, I couldn't imagine getting hit by Paige and Eller at the same time. Oh my gosh, I can see why he <laughs> fumbled. <laughs> uh, no, it doesn't have time possession, but the Vikings ran what? How many plays? The Vikings ran 66 plays, the Cardinals ran 67. Yeah, it's. Uh, I don't even know who Frozen North is. Now I, no, I am the no. I am the guardian 
I am this the is guard. a regular I, encyclopedia. I am the yeah. gatekeeper. Tony is the he's the like I've the, got books from like when you get like Indiana Jones at Night Templar, he's guarding the 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 glass that the gobble there was going for the uh you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Indiana Jones. Yeah, Indiana Jones, that scene where the Knight Templar is guarding the yeah. the drink the thing you drink out of. I can't remember the name. I'm drawing a blank. The goblet. The goblet. Tony is that guy. <laughs> I'm the guy who's before him. <laughs> oh, they're annoying, Sarah. Ever since they won the division, they've become annoying. Yeah. They're just an it's beyond. I can't deal with them anymore. I just I just laugh at them because they'll be right back to bottom feeders and. Well, the thing about we were, we were in a chat with earlier. Um, we, I was watching uh, Lupicus on the uh, the North Roundtable and they were doing a mock draft. Mm -hmm. And there was Lion fans in there, and they're talking like they're the 49ers man. They're talking like they've been dominant for all these years. It's like, come on, guys, guys, do it two years in a row, then then maybe we'll talk. I would say something if the thing was up there. I will. I'll keep it clean. You guys been slapped around for the last forty years. Jeez, you haven't done anything. So the next game was against the Rams. The um, NFC Championship. Now, what was the temperature of that game? It was twenty nine degrees. And, um, it was twenty nine degrees. Let me go to Pro Football Reference. Let me see what they say about the Pro Football Reference uh, weather. It's a little bit better than. Um, now, 29 degrees is literally a heat wave. Yeah, but they have the wind chill and everything. Wind chill is 19 degrees. Still 29 degrees? That's short uh, weather. 29 degrees with wind chill of 19. That's short weather. Vikings are favored by five and a half. Really? Yeah. Favored by five and a half? Damn. That's a lot. Yeah, on an unusually balmy day for December in Minnesota, the Vikings were able to hold the ball for the final 537 of the game to preserve a 14-10 victory. After a scoreless first quarter, Minnesota quarterback Fran Tarkenton threw a 29-yard touchdown to Jim Lash. Rams kicker David Ray later added a 27-yard field goal to cut the lead to 7-3 before halftime. In the third quarter, Los Angeles advanced the ball from their own one-yard line to the Minnesota one-yard line. The big play on the drive was a 73-yard touch. Was a 73-yard pass to Harold Jackson, who was finally pushed out of bounds at, uh, at the Vikings two by safety Jeff Wright. With the ball inside the one-yard line, Rams Rams guard Tom Mack was controversially called for illegal procedure. Replay showed Mack did not move. Whatever, uh, moved back to the six-yard line. The Rams were forced to pass it pass for a touchdown on third down, but the pass was deflected. Uh, by, by, by a Vikings linebacker, Wally Hillenberger. Hillenberg, sorry. Intercepted the ball in the end zone for a touchback. Jackie Minnesota, Wallace tipped it, and yeah. Hilgenberg intercepted it. Minnesota then went on a 15-yard play. It took almost eight minutes off the clock on Dave Osborne's 40-yard touchdown run. With 7.15 left to play in the game, the Rams cut the lead uh, deficit to 14-10 with Harold Jackson's 44-yard touchdown reception. Then after forcing the Vikings to pump, Los Angeles drove to the Minnesota 45-yard line, but a third-down sack forced the Rams to punt the game, and the Vikings kept the ball the rest of the game to run out the clock. Yeah, Doug Sutherland got the sack. I do remember that Doug Sutherland got that sack. James Harris was a quarterback. Um, on that drive, that game-winning drive, what's his name? Uh, Chuck Foreman had like a seven-yard gain. It was a good gain. He fumbled the ball. Luckily, Chuck Goodrum recovered it. Foreman had three fumbles. Yeah, he fumbled three times. Goodrum recovered one, kept the drive alive. Um, but yeah, that game was. I mean, it was it was a hard fought game. They uh, they sacked Harris twice. Yep. And then Vikings were sacked. Targeting was sacked once. Oh, sorry, no, he was sacked twice as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, rushing Foreman twenty-two for eighty. He had no receptions. Right. Davey, you're thinking of seventy-six when Sammy Johnson scored the game winner. That was seventy-six. Sammy Johnson, I think, was still in San Francisco that seventy-four. 
Um, yeah, and Osborne got the technical, technically the game winner. With the, how many yards was it? One yard or four yards? Oh, the last touchdown? Mm-hmm. Uh, the last touchdown, I think, was four yards. Uh, no, one yard. Dave Osborne, one yard. It was a, Harold yeah. Jackson had a 40. I don't know who was covering Harold Jackson, but. It was probably Nate Re- No. He had three receptions for 139 yards. That might have been Jackie Wallace. Uh, let's see. Jackie Wallace, Nate Wright, Jeff uh, Jeff Wright, and Paul Krause with a starting secondary. Yeah, it might have been might have been Jackie Wallace. Jackie coming. Wallace must have been the weakest link of that defense. Jackie Wallace took over for Bobby Bryant. Because I don't remember Jackie Wallace that much. He he uh, he played with us for two years, and then he he, he played for. Uh, wow, he was 6'3", 197. Who Jackie? Yeah, yeah, he wasn't he wasn't small, Ooh. but. Um, he was, I think we traded him the next year. Um, uh, 74 was actually the only year he played for us. 73. We drafted him in 73. And then 70, well, he didn't play a game then. And then, if, uh, he played one year with Minnesota is what it says here on pro football reference. Okay. Don't listen to pro football reference. And then, uh, two years for Baltimore, three years for the Rams. That's right. He went to Baltimore. He went to Baltimore and the Rams. I think we traded him to Baltimore. They switched him to safety after he left Minnesota. Yep. So that yeah. might have been him getting burnt if he was if he got moved to safety when he left. I mean that's yeah, safety was, size. That's safety size, man. Yeah. Yeah, we had him playing corner. Um but we he was drafted as a slat defensive back. Um so <laughs> what does it annoy you, Sarah? <laughs> yeah, Sarah, really. Sarah, you need to stay out of I mean, you need to stay out of them lion rooms because they'll I mean they will annoy you faster than anything. You know, so like I but like I tell everybody, George, if you go to the Super Bowl, win or lose, you get a ring. Yeah. What you what we don't have is a trophy. So And trust me, with the way things are going right now for the Lions, I mean, I don't even pick them to uh, – I don't pick them to repeat. So we already talked about the next game. When we do when we do a season recap, when the Vikings go to the Super Bowl, we usually – we don't talk about the Super Bowl because we already did a Super Bowl show. Plus, Because we, we, already, we already went down misery lane earlier on another show. As a matter of fact, we went down misery lane earlier in this one. With the Super yeah. Bowl. So, I mean, you know, two weeks for the big letdown. You had two weeks to wait for the big letdown. Uh, Bob, yeah, right, Bobby fell down, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sarah, that, I think that has more to do with you being of the female. That has more to do with you else. being a female and a Viking fan. That's that's the whole thing. You probably know more football than that whole damn fan base. Yeah. So the only one who I can really stand well, there's two I can there's two YouTubers who I can who I can as Lions fan. Um I think Mike Micro Mike and Dosa Dion. That's it. That is those are like the only two they're, Lions. because they're realist. They're um, realistic, yes. They're realistic. So yeah. Sarah had a really good question. Why did we fail in the Super Bowl? Um, your guess is as good as mine, Sarah. The the players were they then can't figure that out. That were they, they unprepared? I think a lot of it had to do with coaching. Like I said before, you know, uh, Chuck Foreman even said it. They changed their offensive game plan in two of the Super Bowls. Uh, they changed it for Pittsburgh, which was seventy four, and they changed it for Oakland. They didn't go with the game plan that was successful for them during the year. And, you know, and then Chuck's like questionable play calling. I mean, he still doesn't understand why they gave the ball to Brent McClanahan at the goal line in Super Bowl eleven. You know, Chuck is an all pro. He's all NFC. Why didn't they? Is that the whole 
Seattle not giving the ball to Marshawn Lynch and throwing it type of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Only difference was Chuck wasn't playing for a contract. Chuck was playing to win the damn Super Bowl. You know? Bud was a – he was a defensive guy, but all around Bud was a – he was a – he was a smart head coach. Um, he knew both sides of the ball. But technically, Bud was our special teams coordinator. But he was a – he was an all-around good fence – defense – all-around good – head coach. Um, Bud was more hands-on than any of the coaches now. Um, uh, yeah, Davey, Buddy Ryan was – Buddy Ryan was never D.C. with the Vikings. Um, when Buddy got here in 76, he was the defensive line coach. He took over for Jack Patera. Neil Armstrong was the defensive coordinator. And then when Neil – <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then when Neil got the job, I just got to clarify because you, you know. Well, and then when Neil got there. the job in Chicago, he brought Duddy, Buddy Ryan with him. So Burns, he was the offensive coordinator. Burns was the offensive coordinator. Yeah, Targetson had a lot of input um, with the offense, which kind of pissed off like certain players, like Ron Yeary had bugged him all. Yeah, he was drafted by the Yeah, Lakers. he was drafted. He was he played with the uh Minneapolis Lakers. Yep. He played for the Eagles. And played for the Eagles. And I, he played in I think he won, I want to say he played in Canada, but he coached in Canada. Yeah. He wore 86 um, for the Eagles, I think. Was it 86? He wore 13 at the U. Right. He wore University 86. of Minnesota. He wore 86 for the Eagles, and I think he was at 40. Was it like 40? Like he wore for the Lakers, you were like a weird number as well. I think 13. So I think you wore 13. Was it Mike in 13? No, Mike was still Mike was 99. 99. That's right. Yeah, 99. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Oh, and- by the way, there is an NFL quarterback wearing number zero, Marcus Mariota. Yeah, because he'll be wearing zero because he'll never get on the field and he yeah. sucks. He's the first quarterback ever in the NFL to first wear First quarterback zero. to wear zero. The perfect number for him because he is a zero. So- <laughs> So now that now that, now that the history is over, we do talk a little bit modern, you know. Gophers won the national championship in 1960, right? But they're also the last team to win three in a row. It was a long time ago. But the last team. Well, Davey, I don't think Fran called his own plays. I think it came out when Fran retired that he didn't call his own plays. Um, that's why I say he had a lot of input, but he didn't call his own plays. Um, I don't think the Vikings have ever had a quarterback that called their own plays, but I think Fran had the Fran had the leniency, and he had the uh, he could audible or change anytime he felt like it, um, which probably explains some of the plays that we ran back in the day. But um, he had more latitude to do that. Uh, Bud and Burnsy gave him that much latitude because he, he, Fran was intelligent. He was a very smart guy. He's a cocky, arrogant SOB, but he was very intelligent. So, so I can see. Um, so there's a quote um, from Fran Tarkenton. If you take it out of context, you can see where people get that from. Mm -hmm. So, quote, I called all the plays. Hall of Fame Fran Tarkenton said, I made sure I was prepared uh, by the coaches to understand what defenses were going on and also to get their input on how to attack a defense. So, he didn't actually call the plays, but he was there. He had a lot of of leeway. Yeah. Um, Cap did not call his own. Cap was not that bright. Uh, Cap was a hell of a player, but if they didn't like to play, they would um, they voice their they would voice their uh, displeasure towards it. Joe would especially. Joe Cap would. Fran would also. Um, but Bud gave Fran that that leeway to kind of be his own. You know, he trusted him enough with that offense to let him do what he did. Um, 
And yes, Sarah, Fran did work on Tuesdays. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what day, and I don't know what days the team had off back in the day, if they had any. Um, it was a different, different NFL back then. Once the football season started, that was it. So I don't know if they had any days off. Maybe Saturday they had a walkthrough. You know, yes, he was. His his father was a preacher. Um, Rand was a Southern Baptist. Yeah, there's an article from Los Angeles Times talking about this. Archie Manning called his plays on plays. No wonder they sucked. Um, Stahlbach called, called some of his plays. He called some of his plays, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, when I came into the league, wherever the 11 guys were out there on defense on first down, that was uh, that's the same 11 when I got to third and eight, said Manning. Uh, we had we had a tight end, two wide receivers, and two backs. We didn't bring a third wide receiver. We never had a second tight end except on short, short yardage. Yeah, I, I co the if the coach trusted the quarterback to call plays, you you could do it. So he that's so he, I guess the coach trusted him to call the plays. Well, put this way, you know the team's going to those three wide receiver sets, right? You know who the Vikings' third wide receiver was, Chuck Foreman. That was their third wide receiver. They very seldom went into three wide receiver sets because they had Foreman out of the backfield. And they could line him up anywhere on the field to get a mismatch. Yeah, they're saying a quarterback today couldn't do it because there's too much going on. You literally, you really would for today's NFL quarterbacks, you would literally have to dumb it down. You really would. Um, you have to go back to like the wing T. Right. You really have to dumb it down. And the players nowadays, I think they rely more on their ability more than their smarts. Um, the younger ones, older players that changes as time goes by, you, you get smarter. Um, you can't, you can't play at the same velocity you played at when you were younger. So then it becomes mind over matter. So then you start got to start using your head. Um, George, the thing with Bud was Bud liked veteran players. Um, he didn't have to do a lot of yelling and screaming at the guys because they had veterans. That's why he leaned on the Carl Edwards, <laughs> so the Jim Marshall, so, and those guys. So so Van Brocklin did say that Tarkington called his own plays. He's like, yeah, Frank, Grant Brockle's like, yeah, I hated scrambling quarterbacks. Quarterbacks are only supposed to run out of, out of sheer terror. I told Tarkington, I said, yeah, you can call your own plays when it's third and 40. He's like, I let him call him. <laughs> okay, you're only supposed to run out of sheer terror. Uh, Van, Norm Van Brocklin didn't play behind that offensive line. It was bad. <laughs> he was probably drunk when he said that comment, too. <laughs> he probably was. Smoking a heater. <laughs> He was probably smoking a heater and drunk in his goddamn hotel room. Uh, yeah, he probably was drunk. And he hated Tarkin in front of the start. Uh, he said Fran Rockman was a stationary. This is a this is a story from a 1965 Sports Illustrated. It says the Dutchman is a half an inch away. Coach Norman Rockman has alter, alternately uh, sweet talked and whiplashed his young Vikings into contention for the NFL title. His chief weapon is a gambling, scrambling quarterback called Peach. Yeah, he hated Tarkenton. He says a quarterback should only run from sheer terror, said Norman Van Brocklin a few years ago when he was Don running quarterback. And the fifth year as a head coach, the Minnesota Vikings' fifth year as a football team, Van Brocklin uh, conceivably could win the Western Conference Championship at the National Football League with Fran Peach Tarkenton. Um, he was on the cover for that year. He's a, um, a quarterback who runs from sheer uh, with delight. I cannot change him, Van Brocklin says philosophically. Scramming is his style. When he gets to third and 40, I'll let him call the play. <laughs> uh, the Vikings, who open the season next week against the Western Championship Colts, uh, day's big game, probably have the best third and 40 offensive football. A, a doubtful but electrifying distinction for a team that rarely gets – into the kind of jam, their third and forty play almost the same. 
Tarkenton takes the ball, retreats, hopefully into the blocking, the blocking pocket, then begins to improvise. He leaves the pocket, tripping nimble, uh, nimbly a step or two ahead of the 260-pound defense defenders and confusing his blockers beyond repair. As he wanders further and further behind the line of scrimmage, he seems to know exactly where the tacklers are and just how to avoid them. He watches as his receivers invent patterns downfield. Finally, he throws the ball, and often uh, not as he gets the first down, and occasionally he gets a touchdown. This may be the single most exciting play in football, exciting to the to the fans and to Van Brockley, who is far more active following targeting from the sideline, uh, as never a quarterback on the field. Uh, Van Brock, it, it's reading the, the writing in the 60s is way different than it is today. It was, ex- uh, it was an exciting play, but not to the defensive linemen that were chasing yeah. his ass. Van Brockley was a stationary quarterback for two reasons. First, he could run first enough to escape from an enraged, uh, enraged turtle. <laughs> and second, he th- he was taught exactly in his career that a quarterback is not supposed to run. Well, that's like we're talking. 50s. And he was in the 50s. He yeah. was in the 50s, and this was the 60s. When Van Brocklin played, he didn't have to deal with Deacon Jones and Merlin Olsen and Willie Davis. He's, I learned quarterbacking from Jim Aikens at Oregon. Van Brocklin said the other day at, at Jack's to the to, uh, to Toot Shore. Is that who? Uh, Jack's the Toots Shore. T O O T S, the T O O T S S H O R of Bijimi, uh, uh, Minnesota. Never heard of um, which is the Vikings training town. Uh, so I guess it's a bar and where the Vikings, the Vikings usually train in, in Virginia. Uh, Van Rockland has gone to Oregon from uh, a, a high school in California where he was a tailback in high school, which tells you all you need to know about the running ability of the football players where he's from. He's like, I had to throw. I didn't need to run. Yeah. So he's like, you're right out of pocket. He says, you're right out of the pocket and you're on your way home, he told Van Brocklin. Anyone who lets you into the pocket is on his way home, he told the offensive line. He says, I, uh, I wrote, Van Brocklin says he rolled out all the time mm-hmm. and I ran towards the sideline, but I never but I never really ran. So, yeah. So he just talked about his college and stuff like that. Right. Yeah, he, he said he let Fran Tark be call his plays when it was third and four. Yeah, but first and second down were another story. Yeah, uh, Tarkington was the first draft choice. Was the first draft choice. Uh, Tarkington and Tommy Mason were the two draft choices. Van Brocklin um, made made as a Vikings coach. Now who uh, made Rip Hawkins? Because Rip Hawkins was number two. The team was stocked was stacked was uh, stocked with expensive castoffs from uh, the rest of the league. Most of them overage and. Uh, out of condition, plus other rookies attaining the draft. Oh, it says Tarkington and Tommy Mason were the only high quality athletes. Hmm. Like, okay, this is written so weird. It's amazing how stuff in the sixties was written <laughs> compared to today. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's uh, so. And this all started for me looking up to Tommy, the Fran Tarkenton calls home plays. <laughs> yeah. It's mostly well, about it's most the SI story is mostly about Van Brocklin, but that was uh that was kind of cool. You know what? I'll what I'll have to do is I'll have to ask Chuck Foreman. I plan to go on one of those meet and greets. I'll ask him when I see him, did Fran call his own plays? Um from what I understood, he didn't. Uh, it came out after he retired that he didn't call his old plays. Yeah. But um it wouldn't shock me. Wouldn't shock me. I've heard some stuff today. Um that the Giants could jump the Vikings at the number three. If the I've Giants, been hearing that. I've been hearing that for the last two weeks. If the Giants trade the number five pick and Daniel Jones to the Patriots. I've heard they were going to trade up, and they were going to. Some places have um, JJ McCarthy going to New England. Um. Some have uh, 
McCarthy's sticking around, or they have May, uh, Drake May fallen. Um, and then if the Giants do jump up, they're going to take Jaden Daniels. But this comment just, right here, I told Buffalo Bill fans, I said, You guys like Stefan Diggs now, but when the going gets tough and things aren't going the way he wants them to go, he will. He's going to be, he's going to become a diva and he's going to be gone. He will ask out. Yeah, I said will. that on Facebook today. I said, Diggs is diva. So some idiot goes, oh, so every player that asks for a trade is a diva? I'm like, how does that correlate to Stefan Diggs? Well, here's the funny part. He wanted out of Buffalo, right? Didn't Gabe Davis leave? Gabe Davis is gone, but he didn't ask to leave. He just he just left. Yeah. I mean, he could have been the number one receiver again. I mean, they didn't get anybody worth, you know, that would change it. But yeah, he's not the brightest. He really isn't. But there's also, I heard, I don't know where the rumor started, but with the Buffalo Bills blowing it up, like Minnesota giving them 11 23 next year's one for Josh Allen. I don't want Josh Allen. So I don't want Josh Allen. I've seen enough of Josh Allen. I don't want him. Yeah. I so, don't. Davey, was there a bar? In, I, it, what, what is it? But I cannot say that. Too sure. Was that in Bidimini? How the hell do you say that city? Kissimmee? No, the one in Minnesota. Bidimini? Bemidji. Bemidji. So was there, So do you remember that place, Davey, that they're talking about in that article? Yeah. Well, we did, uh, we did a ranking of the Vikings coaches of all time. There's only been 11 of them. So we said... Uh, KOC is inclusive right now, but we didn't. We had the list starting from the worst down to the best. The worst for me personally, uh, Brad Childress, uh, kick ass offense. Uh, yeah, uh, Brad Childress, he's the worst. I think he's not less stickle. So, yeah, but stickle only got a year to live that mistake. Yeah, but he also set the franchise back though. Not really, he got us, we got all the yeah. the thing that helped us was the USFL folded. That's the thing that helped us the best, the most. I don't think the Patriots are going to take a quarterback. I don't think they are. Um, that's why I think Minnesota's uh, probably going to. I think you got to. I think the Vikings got something worked out with New England. Are going to I take. think the. I think the Giants. Are the wild card because if the Giants do say, "Hey, we'll give you five of Daniel Jones," nobody wants Daniel Jones. Yeah, but the Patriots can rework his contract because they're not the ones eating the dead money. The Giants are. I wouldn't take Daniel Jones. He's no better than friggin' Mac Jones. God, who's calling the? Sh is it? Is it Kraft that's calling the shots in New England now? Uh, Kraft has said that. Um, he will draft for quarterback. I mean, he will take a trade. You know, they have a lot of holes, man. They need more than just a quarterback. They got more. They need more than a quarterback. They got so many holes. It's not even funny. They need like a. They need like a, a whole new team. I mean, KJ you know? Osborne's their number one receiver. Good luck to that. Good luck. I, mean, with I know the... they have the other guy, but who's the other guy? Uh, they just signed him last year. Didn't they sign Juju? Uh, let me see. Yeah, they got Juju. So I'm looking at it now. Okay. So for wide receivers, they have – wow. Okay. So they got K.J. Osborne, uh, Jalen Rager, <laughs> Keyshawn Boutte, whatever how you say his name, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, uh, Demario Douglas, Kendrick Bourne, uh, 
KJ Osborne. Yeah, so he, I don't know. The receiving core is not awful. Yeah, who's throwing the ball to him right now? It's Zappy, isn't it? Bailey Zappy right now is the quarterback. Uh, Jacoby Brissett, they signed him. Well, that's right, Jacoby Brissett. Yeah. So he would be the bridge. I don't know why they just don't wait next year and get ears. I don't either. You know? I think Ryder Kraft has got this notion that they can still compete. It's like, no, you can't, dude. You can't compete. I don't know if I want Caleb Williams, man. Too much of a baby for me. He's got some. I see he's got some issues. He's got some issues. I just look at him. I'm just kind of like, I don't know if I really want to deal with that. Head You're right, sir. Patriots wide receiver core is better than Buffalo's. One difference. Bill's got a quarterback. I don't know. I think that window's closed on uh, Buffalo. I really do. Oh, yeah. I think that window's closed. So, Oh, by the way, folks, we're not going to have a, a free-for-all this Friday. It'll be next Friday. So yeah. this Friday, we need a break. <laughs> um, we, are, we do need a break because... I don't think it's this Monday. It's I think it's next Monday. Not this Monday coming up, but the one after that. I gotta confer with my brother in law, but we'll probably be having the wrestling show. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, let me know. Um that's gonna be an interesting one, folks. We're gonna have a lot to talk about. If you're a wrestling fan, check it out. It's gonna have it's gonna be a very interesting show. I got some questions. <laughs> Well, there is steam about Josh Allen being traded. Yeah, there is. Yeah, there is. But think about it. Why? Why? If the Vikings get Josh Allen, Josh Allen, Aaron Jones, JJ, Jordan Addison, TJ, when he comes back, that offensive line is above average, and that defense, the way that, I mean, they would. They, wouldn't Josh Allen be top one? He'd be one of the top quarterbacks in the NFC. He's still young. Yeah, but do you but do you really want that money? Well, he how much I don't think he makes that much. You just got off of one big contract. He makes less than Kirk. Everybody makes less than Kirk. Jesus. Everybody does so, more than Kirk also. <laughs> so Josh Allen's contract in 2025 is 14 million. 14 mil. What was Kirk? Uh Kirk is 50. Kirk get 90 million dollars this year, 40 million for con uh, for being on the roster. So roster, so his base salary is 14 million. He get um the so 3.3 for signing bonus comes out. Um, and then I guess he has a roster of 25. Right. So he makes so he makes $25 million. Right. His cap is 60 million, but the bills would eat that. So for 20 for 2025 or 2026, uh, so 2024, which is this year, mm. it's eight and a half million, eight point six million. That's it. Okay. 14 million 2025, 22 and 2026. Okay. And they go then it goes down to 14 and then 15. Okay, here's my question for you. Say the Vikings don't get McCarthy or May. Are you cool at staying at 11 and getting a defensive tackle? I I think if the Vikings for some reason can't move up like Quasi thinks it's too rich to move up. Mm -hmm. And let's say he's like in the quarter and the three quarterbacks they want are gone. I don't think Quasi's going to reach for a quarterback. I don't think he's going to take a quarterback just to take a quarterback. I think that I would be on the phone with Buffalo being, I'll give you my 11, I'll give you my 23, and I'll give you a first next year. 
and then for maybe Allen? Get, then, then get back a second for Buffalo. So you have a second round pick. For Allen? For Josh Allen, yeah. With that contract being a top quarterback. Like I, I said, just, he only makes twenty five million dollars. I mean, that's compared to what we are paying Kirk Cousins. I mean, you can build around a twenty five million dollar quarterback. And but Allen's got his Allen's got his moments where he's more frustrating than Kirk. Yeah, but at least he'll run when he when it's third and three and there's a hole. You know, is he well, as see, accurate? That's another is, thing he, too. is he as accurate as Cousins? No, he's not as accurate. And that as will drive KLC up a wall. You know how they preach accuracy. I know. That will drive him up a wall. I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't think Darn going to Davies' comment, I don't think Darnold is going to be as bad as people think he's going to be. I think Darnold will be fine. I think Darnold will be fine. If you've got Aaron Jones, pound the damn rock. Um, you got to upgrade that interior of the offensive line, though. You're not going to – you can't keep parading Bradbury out there and expect him to be any different. He's going to – if anything, he'll probably regress. Um, he's not that good in the first place. You got to get a – you got to get a left guard unless they're going to run with Brandel. Um, I don't I, – I don't think they're bringing back Dalton Reisner, even if he does have a agent who – most of his players are with the Vikings. I don't think they're bringing Reisner back. So, no, Diggs is just a fucking diva. Yeah, Diggs just Diggs just has issues. That's that's the reason why he was a fifth round pick. His attitude. How many players became active pro wrestlers? Like, like are wrestling right now or over time? Because most of your most of your pro wrestlers have played some some football. Or are you talking former Vikings who were wrestlers? Well, because you got Roman Reigns, you got you know Roman Reigns. You've got a couple. You got the one big guy who went to camp with the Vikings. He's Brock in wrestler. Brock Le Well, Brock Lesnar is the other one. Um, the other guy I can't even pronounce his name, but he was a he was down in NXT with Apollo Apollo Creed Apollo Cruz. Um, Madcap Moss is Mike Rallis from the University of Minnesota. Of uh, right now, Baron Corbin was in training camp with the Chiefs. At one time, I can't think of any. I, you know what? I don't know if Reisner does. Um, he's got a new agent. He's he's got uh, Drew Rosenhaus. Rosenhaus has a bunch of uh, clients with the Vikings, and um, um, uh, so yeah, I'm sure he's trying to. Yeah, Kittle's probably gonna wrestle. He'll probably put on some what you call it. Um so but yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if WWE's trying to get uh what's his name to to join? Uh Kelsey. Jason. Uh was it Joe uh Anoy? Joe Anna what? Anna Y. Well, yeah. Yeah, he was a Viking. Um, he was a Jaguar too. Angelo Mosca was a was uh played for years. Um he got matter of fact, Joe Cap punched him when they were old and gray. <laughs> um Mosca played, uh Junkyard Dog played, Paul Orndorff, um Dusty Rhodes, he played with the uh Boston Patriots, Wahoo McDaniel, um Let's see, Bob Duncombe, Lex Luger, he played with the Packers. Ernie Ladd, he's another one. Um, I'm missing uh, – Russ Francis did wrestle, so he he was a wrestler. Um, God. 
who else? I'm missing. I'm missing guy. Steve McMichael, Mongo McMichael. Um, let's see. All right, so Tito Santana. Tito Santana. He was with the Chiefs. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Uh, Big Van Vader. Oh, Leon White. Yes, Leon White. Uh, Brock Lesnar. Uh, Dick the Bruiser. Dick the Bruiser, yeah. Brock Lesnar. Bronco Bruce... Nagurski. Bronco Nagurski was a wrestler. Yes, he was. Leon Amelino was a wrestler. Wow, Goldberg with hair. Woo, that looks weird. Oh, when he had the Mohawk? Yeah. Oh God. Uh big cat Ernie Ladd. Yeah. Frank Goodish was Bruiser Brody. Wahoo McDaniel. Wahoo McDaniel, yes. Ron Simmons. Ron yeah, Ron Simmons was with the uh Browns. Wait, um, Florida State. And he was big at Florida State. Uh Steve Williams, Dr. Death. He was Oklahoma. Um all star lineman. Tully Blanchard played quarterback at uh I forget what he was quarterback at a Texas school. He ran a wishbone. Lex Luger. Luger was a Packer. Um Baron Varoski played end at Nebraska. Uh Marcus Con Marcus Caravan. What's the uh, name? Muncie Brown, uh, Monty Brown. Monty Brown, yes. He was with the Buffalo Bills, I believe. Um of Leon White, as you said, Vader, yeah. So Baron, uh, Baron Corbin. Um, there's so many. So many. Um, yeah. Hard-boiled Haggerty. He played with H.B. Haggerty. He, rather, he played with the Packers. Um... Vern had a bunch of guys that were football players that ended up wrestling in the AWA. Jim Brunzel was at the university. He went to camp with the Washington. Uh, um, Titus O'Neill. Titus O'Neill played football. Rick Flair played football at the University of Minnesota. Uh, uh, Brian Pillman. Brian Pillman, yes. He was, a, he was with the Bengals. Uh, Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin, yes. Uh, we already said Ron Simmons, JBL. JBL did play. Okay, I haven't seen uh, the wrestler yet, George. Um, he was drafted by the Raiders in 1980. Okay, but dropped the see, but he was cut in the preseason. Damn. Moho Rally. Who? Moho Rally played for the Packers. Looks like. Oh, Mojo Raleigh. Yeah. Yeah, he was a Packer. He was a Packer. Well, Rob Gronkowski, I think, is doing wrestling, too. Yeah, Rob Gronkowski's wrestling. Yeah, Mojo Raleigh is a uh... – is that Matt Cardona? No, Mojo Raleigh, I forget his name, but, yeah, he I remember him in a Packer outfit. Um... Well, The Rock, obviously. Yeah, the rock. He played. He played football. Stone Cold Steve Austin played football. Mm -hmm. um, Matter of fact, the Rock lost his job to John one Cena. In Miami. Cena played football. Cena was a guard at a small college. Yeah. Uh, Enzo Amore. Amore. Enzo Amore played football. Uh, he was a played uh, Division Three Salisbury. Oh, okay. Uh, Big E Langstrom, Langston. Big E played at Iowa. Uh, Bo Dallas. Bo Dallas played football. I think Braid, his brother, played. He played at Florida. Bo, Bo played Dallas. at uh, Bo Dallas played at Florida. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bray Bray Wyatt. Bray, well, who did Bray play with? Uh, he played backup center. Uh, okay. Troy University. He went to Troy. Okay. Uh, Soul. The Usos, they both oh. played at uh, University of West Alabama. Okay. Uh, Darren Young, uh, he played for Frederick. Uh, his real name is Frederick Rosser. He played at Fairleigh Dickinson. Fairleigh Dickinson, yeah. Uh, Jack Swagger. Played, uh, yeah, that's, Jake, that's Jack Hager. He played at Oklahoma. Yeah. 
uh, R Truth uh, played for Harding. Okay. Uh, his real name is Ryan Killings. Ryan Killings, yeah. Killings. Um, Tyler Sonio, uh, Brian, we talked about. Uh, Eric Rowan. Um, he, Minnesota born uh, Eric Rowan. He's part of the Wyatt family. Yeah, Eric Rowan, Redbeard. Eric yeah, Redbeard. That's what he wrestles under now. Played at Minnesota Morris. Real That's... name is Joseph Rude. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, Mo, we just talked about Mojo. John Bradshaw talked about him. Paul, Mr. Wonderful Ordnoff. Orndorff played, yeah, he played with Saints. Yeah, he played, played football at the University of Tampa, which doesn't have a team anymore. Oh, they don't? No. <laughs> uh, the Invader went to Colorado. Mm -hmm. He was a he was a uh, oiler. Leon White. Uh, he also he was drafted by the Rams. Rams, that's right. He was with the Rams. Yeah. Uh, injury into his career. Yep. Uh, okay, so we're uh, getting into ones we've already talked about. Let's see. Bob Pitt, Brian Pillman talked about him. Ahmad Johnson played for the University of Tennessee, middle linebacker for the Dallas oh. Cowboys in ninety and ninety one. Ahmad Johnson, his, yeah. His real name is Anthony Tor Tony Morris Norris. Mm -hmm. uh, Darren Draws Puke Drozdoff. Drozdoff, he just passed away. He played for the Broncos. Played for the went to the University of Maryland. Played for the Jets and Broncos. Yep, played for the Broncos. Uh, Mongo Michael. Um, Baron Packer. God, Broncos are just he's all black and white. Hmm. Bron and then Bronco, it's all black and white video. <laughs> oh God. Um, so Sarah, there, so there, there's watch, a lot. So, Sarah, if you want to watch any kind of wrestling, SmackDown for now is on Fox, but hey, they Mama, you you catch it. You can catch it on Friday nights. That's WWE. Um, yes, Mom, we're always we're still going at it. You know, our shows are two and a half, three hours long. I, I thought you were going to bed. Oh yeah, what's going on, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Angelo Mosca played in Canada. Yep. Yeah, he played in Canada. A um, bunch of those guys played in Canada. Ernie Ladd was a Charger and a Chief. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cap used to get in, he used to get into bar fights a lot, even when he was a player. So who drank more, Cap or Kramer? Kramer. Tommy. To this day, it's still Tommy. <laughs> I'm not as huge wrestling fan as Tony is. Like I I have not watched wrestling since the last time I literally watched wrestling was in WL, WCW. That's how long it's been since well, I go it. I go through my phases where I'll watch it, then I won't pay attention. Then I'll start watching it again. But it's I basically a male soap opera. Yeah, but I mean when I when I start to know people that were in the business and they started tell me behind the scenes, then I started paying attention. I don't have the sound bite, but yeah, Ric Flair is still with us. Um, yep, his daughter's wrestling now. She's hurt. She's got a knee injury. Yeah, he lost Reed. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he lost Reed. It's oh, funny, he, and this is a story that um, that you can ask my brother-in-law when he comes on. Uh, there, there used to be a show, I don't know if it's still on, but it was just recently where Triple H and Stephanie hired other retired wrestlers to go out and find merchandise for the Hall of Fame. And there was this Ric Flair uh, coat that he wore. And one, of his, one of his robes. One of his robes, and it was one he only wore once. And his robes were very heavy, by the way. And um, they didn't know where it was. They asked Ric Flair. He's like, yeah, I don't know. Well, it turns out that he just left it in his hotel room when he left. And the maid who cleaned his room kept it. And then finally, when finally she put it up for sale and some guy bought it. So I asked my brother-in-law, I said, how did you forget something like that? He's like, you just, he's like, they tell you, they call you and tell you you got to go. You just go. He's like, and it was, and knowing Ric Flair, he was probably drunk. 
Yeah. Yeah. Knowing Ric Flair, he was probably drunk. Um, he's been known to do a ton of things. Um, not all nice things either. Um, there's a ton of stories about him. Yeah, see, I grew up in Florida. And Florida, other than New York, I think was the best wrestling league out there. No. Um, from he, watching from watching he, the dark side of the ring, they said the Florida one was... Well, know. and see, um, what's his name? They brought that up with uh, Warren Sapp. They were talking about it, him and uh, Rich yes, Eisen. Sarah, I bet you did like Brett the Hitman Hart. He said, because um, Warren Sapp, they asked him, did you feel bad taking The Rock's job? He's like, no. Because we knew he was going to wrestle, you know, and they're like, you know, it's like, so you knew he was going to WWE. They're like, no, that's that's not the wrestling we were thinking. They were talking. They were going to wrestle in Florida. That's what they called real wrestling, where you went, yeah. where you wrestled in the tents and you wrestled in the schools and stuff like that. AWA is or uh, WWE was just like show. It wasn't even real wrestling. Um but the territories, the territory days were probably the best. Yeah. Um, we just did, uh, my wife just watched the Dark Side of the Ring, Harley Race. Yeah, that he, uh, you know, you watch those, you watch those shows, you just end up feeling so bad for the wrestlers. You just do, because they just, they got screwed over one way or another. Um it's it's just sad but that was the nature of the business they were they they screwed a lot of the wrestlers a lot of the wrestlers yeah uh jake the snake is one of the few that from the old school that's still with us um he had to work through a bunch of his demons too he was down in a he showed up in aew he's done some things down there he might be working behind the scenes, but yeah, he's another one that's had a ton of had a ton of demons to work through and stuff like that. There's so many of them. Um, but yeah, it's uh, the stuff behind the scenes is more interesting than what you see on the screen. The behind the scenes stuff is a lot of politics, put it that way. A yeah. lot of politics. Well, I guess now we can take the time to thank everybody for coming in and listening to us jabber about Viking history and everything else under the sun. Um, only thing we didn't hit tonight is music. Yeah. And that's the only thing we didn't hit. So, so give me one, give me one second here. What you looking for? Uh, let's see. Let's see. So, All right, so this is my brother-in-law when he wrestled. When he wrestled. Oh, okay. And then, let me see. I don't know if I have it still or not. Let me see. And which Doink the Clown was he, number two? I'm not sure which one he was. He can answer that question when okay. he comes on. Um, but he, he can tell you all about Doink the Cloud if you want and all that. Um, so let me see. This is the same one. Yep, that's the same one. Okay. Oh, Davey, so you were on the East. You were in New York, so you had Bruno and those wrestlers, and then um, you had Pedro Morales, too. Um, wow, if I could go back in time to attend one concert, which would it be? Uh... And I think I showed this before, but that's him. Oh, okay. autographs says Doink the Clown. That's just a that's just a fan. Okay. Um, 
he also has two books he written too. Okay. Um, Sarah, if I had to go back and see any concert, I would have to say Woodstock to see Jimi Hendrix. Um, and that was in 69. Other than that, the only other concert I'd want to see is maybe um, hard to say. 69 for sure to see Hendrix. Um, in 74, who would I want to see? Well, 74 is actually the beginning of Kiss. So early Kiss or um, God, what was the heaviest band then? Since I'm into more of the heavy stuff. Um, Grand Funk Railroad. That's what I want to see in 74. Grand Funk. Uh, I know the drummer. Oh, do you? Uh, when I was in school down in Florida, his wife is a DJ for one of the radio stations, and I in, I interned with her. And he come in all the time. Oh, okay. Was it Don? Don oh gosh, I can't remember his name. Um, Don uh, Brewer? Not Brewer. Don Wells? Something like that. Sonny Quinn's his wife. She's a she's a DJ. Mm. Um, I thought it was Corey Wells. No, that's Three Dog Night. Um, no, it's Don Brewer. Don Brewer. Right. Yep. Yeah. Had a bigger fro than most brothers I knew. <laughs> so does. Last time I saw him, at least. Yeah, he was. They're still touring. It's with, uh, matter of fact, uh, Bruce Kulick from Kiss is their guitarist. So these are the two books that my brother in law has written. Okay. The Journal of a Journey Man. Oh, okay. And this is his first one. Oh, okay. So this is the guest that we're going to have on for the wrestling show. That's my brother-in-law. Cool, cool, cool. So, and he will tell you the dark side of the ring is probably the most truthful show out there. Um, it's a, like I said, and dark side of the ring. He's got some stories, man. I tell you. Uh, I'm going to ask him to tell him about the, but uh, I'm not was, exactly sure how the story goes. But was he on the plane ride from hell? Yes, he, uh, he was. I do not know if he was on a different plane ride or if he was on that plane ride or not. But he can tell you about it. That plane. Oh my God, that is. Ric Flair was on that plane, folks, and you need to hear what he did. <laughs> looky here, looky here. <laughs> <laughs> He was oh, my favorite. My favorite movie of all time is uh, Shawshank Redemption. My favorite movie of all time is Goodfellas. Good night, Mama. Love you again. Good night, Mom. Yeah, yeah. My Sarah's favorite movie is movies. my favorite movie is Goodfellas. I can watch that movie. Uh, and my second movie that I, I it, that is very hard to find. Um, pretty much, you can't find it digital anywhere. Is what any of mine? Eddie and the Cruisers. They stopped printing that movie, didn't they? I think they did. I wonder why. I don't know. It's a good movie. Yeah, it's a good movie. And they they made a second one too, and that's even harder to find. Yeah. Eddie and the Cruisers, Eddie Lives, second one. That's even harder to find. Um remember but, the cartoon Heavy Metal? Yeah. For years that was out of print. Yeah. For years, um, the one that was really out of print was um, what was it? Oh God, what was it? Um, it was um, it, Spinal Tap went out of print too, didn't it? Yeah, Spinal Tap did too. Yeah, Shaw Shawshank, I can watch that. My so my top three movies. I mean, Eddie the Cruisers, I like it, but it's not my top three movie. Mm -hmm. So my top three movies are probably Shawshank one. Oh, brother, we're off out too. I love that movie. You know, mm -hmm. so you know you can you can. 
come at me, come at me all you want. If you don't, I don't know. I I I, I like that movie. You can have and, it. <laughs> you can have it. And then my third favorite movie of all time is uh, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I haven't seen that in years. I think my three are what? Goodfellas, Godfather. Um, I did like Breakfast Club. I'll make you an offer you can't refuse. Enter the Dragon. That was his last movie, wasn't it? That was his last movie. Yeah. There's a show. Uh, there's a show called Warrior, that's on Netflix. It was an HBO. It was a Max show. Yeah. Um, Shan was it Shannon Lee, Bruce's daughter, mm -hmm. is the executive producer on that. Yeah. But her dad wrote it. Oh really? She's held yeah. on to it that much, that long? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm. And he's been gone 40 years, 50 years. Yeah. And she said that if Brandon was still alive, that he'd be one of the main characters. So do you believe that thing? I don't know. Um, I mean... Blanks are blanks for a reason. They're not supposed to be mixed in with regular bullets. No, they're not. And um, didn't they just have that problem on the Alec Baldwin set of his movie? Yeah, but I don't think his gun was uh, was blank. I think it was real bullets. That's why they got in trouble. <sighs> Nobody got charged for uh, House right? of Flying Daggers is pretty good, but it's nowhere near Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Mm -mm. I have Game of Death. Was Bruce Lee's last movie? Well, Bruce Lee, he saw the Bruce saw the premiere of Enter the Dragon in Hong Kong. He didn't see it in the U.S. He died over in Hong Kong when the movie was done. <laughs> it's not. A oh God, Sarah! It's an Asian movie. You know, it's Asian, Asian movies, movie. They don't, they don't show any nudity in that. No. What's her name? Is in there? Michelle. Michelle Yao. Michelle Yao. She's in there. Yeah. So is uh, Chan Yao Fat. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Shinobi's pretty cool. Yeah. Shinobi's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, no, I like movies. Don't get me wrong. Um, I mean, I like those cheese. I like those cheesy kung fu movies where the dialogue is the mouths are still moving, but they're only saying two words. You want to fight? <laughs> yeah. <I mean. laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, they'll they'll put together. They'll be talking forever, but they're only saying like two <laughs> words. Jeez, George. <laughs> Poor God names. For God's sake, you people! <laughs> oh, we can't talk about anything with you. Oh. <sighs> well, shaving Private Ryan's probably the best transfer name. Yeah, that was the name of a movie. That was the name Band of Band of Brook Brothers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're out there, people. Oh my gosh. Oh um, my God. Well, on that note, <laughs> this show, exactly. Yeah, the, God, the Godzilla movies, the old fashioned Godzilla, the old class, the classic old monster movies are awesome. Yeah. I know they're cheesy. I know they're quirky. I don't care. They're perfect for pizza. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're perfect for pizza and nachos and what have you. And the second movie for that is called Sword of Destiny. It's the second part of. Is that the second Tiger. part of Crouching Tiger? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, I watched I never, like on. Uh, I never saw that one. The uh, it, they just released it 2022, I think. Okay. Um, there's another show on Netflix. It's Michelle's in. It's called The Brother's Son. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Uh, I'm watching Shogun right now. There's not enough. I like that. That show is pretty cool. Um, John Wick is probably my new. Is probably my new series that I like. Um, yeah. See, I got to sit down and watch a lot of these movies. I haven't. Yeah. Although I, I'll tell you what, I am in. I don't have Chiller anymore. They took it off Directv. The channel Chiller. What channel was that on? Chiller. The ch channel was called Chiller. They played nothing but horror movies. They got an app for it? I don't know. Davey might be able to answer that. But they used to be on DirecTV and they took it off. 
Oh, okay. I'm sure I've got an app for like movies like that. I just got to look. Who, whose it. mom was Catholic? Bruce Lee's. Mm hmm. I think so. Uh, actually, Bruce Lee died from. Uh, They did it. They did it. The uh, autopsy show in reels. They did an autopsy uh, when that doctor looks at the history of Bruce Lee. Um, he went to a friend's house, and I'm not sure if he was a mistress, mistress or not. I'm not going to say yes or no. She swore up and down that there was nothing going on. They, they didn't talk about it on the show. They just mm -hmm. didn't, you know. But he took um, what's. The, Quarter, what's that? The cortisone shot you take? Yeah. When it was the early form of that. And he took, I guess he just took too much of it and he went to sleep and never woke up. Like an early form of steroids. Yeah. And he just, he just went to sleep and never, he never woke up. He never woke literally, up. Because literally he, uh, he was in pain. So, like he had, back, he had severe back pain. So. Yeah. Yeah. I like we, to we, yeah. Dave, we do get Sven Gulli up here. We do get Sven Um yeah, we used to have, so, yeah, sorry. We used to have something called Horror Incorporated for years back in the day. I miss that. That's where you could see all those old school movies. Although I do want to see the new Godzilla King Kong movie. I heard it's great. Uh, have you seen uh, Zero? Godzilla Zero? Mm -mm. You need to see that one. Um. Uh, that it's called was it zero monster zero uh no uh, am i missing a godzilla movie recently that i haven't seen yes it came out um godzilla minus one i haven't seen that one yet 2023 it's a japanese uh it's japanese oh okay that they don't speak in english in the movie. It's that's awesome. figured and they use nine they use uh Late '80s, early '90s. Uh, Godzilla. Uh, yeah, uh, the um, CGI and all that type of stuff. Well, you know that's their yeah. god. That is their Godzilla. These Godzillas we're looking at are the American version. Yeah, and basically it's called minus one because after World War II, you know Japan was wrecked, right? Mm -hmm. And they finally got they finally got it back. What they would consider zero. The city, right? And then Godzilla attacks. So, God, when Godzilla well, if it attacks, wasn't Godzilla, it, it was city. Rodan. If it wasn't Rodan, yeah. it was friggin' the Gargantuas. If I mean, come on, who wasn't tearing up Tokyo? Um, is that a Toho production? I don't know. I think it was. That might be. Yeah, that's probably a Toho because I think Godzilla is owned by Toho. But if you have not seen it, I would that we went to go to the movie theater to see it. Right. Um War of the Gargantuas, yes. 66, yes. It's all okay. I saw uh, the gorgeous uh Gorgia uh is what they of course Godzilla's Gorgia in Japanese. Mm -hmm. Um see it says uh the twenty twenty 2023 Japanese kaiju film directed and written and with visual effects by Takasaki uh, Namazaki, produced by Toho Studios and Robot Communications. Okay. Distributed by Toho. It's yeah. the 37th film in the Godzilla franchise, Toho's 33rd. 37, huh? I've only seen maybe 12. <laughs> yeah, it's the fifth film in the franchise, uh, R E I W A era. Um, so. Wow. Um, oh, did you notice in this new one? So Godzilla, uh, Mothra, King Ghidorah, giant monsters all out attack 2001. Uh, then Shin, Godzilla 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, always Sunset on 3rd Street. Um, uh, so some of these don't even have Godzilla names. But I guess they're all in the era or in the all storyline of Godzilla. Okay. I think in this, I think in this one, 
that we the the Kong and Godzilla one. I think yeah. they got the son of Kong in it. I think they actually put because they they made a son of Kong back in the 30s. Um and um they made a Queen Kong too. So I wouldn't be shocked if they've got both in this new one. I think Son of I think the little baby Kong is in this one. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I, that one I've I don't know. I got an app here where I can get all those movies on my on my fire stick, so maybe I'll just decide to watch it one day. <laughs> I could probably sit down and watch all the Godzilla movies. I you know what it's warmer out now, so I probably wouldn't, but come fall or winter, hell yeah. So the Godzilla minus one had a twelve million dollar budget had a had a twelve million dollar budget. Mm-hmm. It made 112. In the first week? No, total. It said uh, over 112 million, um, becoming the fifth highest grossing Japanese film. Um, and it also, uh, fifth highest ja grossing Japanese film, and then it surpassed Shin Godzilla as the most successful Japanese Godzilla film. Godzilla's still popular. Godzilla's still popular. Even yeah. when he, even the Americanized version. Opening weekend, they made they made eleven million dollars on opening weekend, so they made their money back on the first weekend. Yeah, that's usually how it works. Oh, you would hope so. Yeah. Yeah, I love. I'm. Yeah, it's a. I, I can watch those cheesy Godzilla movies, those cheesy like horror movies. I love watching those things. I just, so does my wife. My wife was watching those cheesy horror movies. Um, know, if it's if it's a cheesy kung fu and a cheesy monster movies, I can watch them. I don't. Do you care. ever do you ever remember watching the movie called The Lift? I never heard of it. I, it was in a. I remember my brother and I rented it from uh, Blockbuster Video for the weekend. And uh, you know how like when you rent a certain amount of movies, they give you one that doesn't rent mm -hmm. very well for free. <laughs> yeah. So the lift was the one that, did, and I can't remember the premise of it, but. I just remember one part of the scene where this guy is leaning over like an elevator, a door, and mm -hmm. the elevator is coming down, and the elevator cuts his head off, and you can see the head falling, but the graphics are so bad that you can tell it's like a wax head. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. So basically, the movie is so bad, it's like a comedy. You know? I, it's just like... I, I mean, it's so bad. Even, it's so it's so bad. You'll watch it anyway. Yes, you'll you'll even, watch it yes. all the way through, and then you'll regret watching yeah. it because you're like, God, that movie sucks. That's, two, that's an hour and a half. I'm never to get back in my life. Yeah, that's ninety minutes out of my life. I will never get back. Yeah. God. You know, Davy, I haven't seen them in years. If it's the one I'm thinking about. Scariest movie I ever saw, believe it or not. Unfortunately, as a kid, I made the mistake and saw The Exorcist. I don't get scared. I I was like eight years old, and I saw the unedited version of The Exorcist. Oh, my God. Yeah, I don't get scared watching movies. They don't scare me either. I just kind of... I sing, just never... I just... You know it's going to happen. There may be the a most, little shock value, but... The most... Disturbing movie I ever watched uh, was on Netflix. Um, damn, I can't think of the name of it right now. But it was a clown, white face with black, and he wore a black and white costume. Oh, God, what was the name of that movie? Um, uh, kind of like The Nightmare Before Christmas? No, no. Um... Let me see. Uh, let me see. Phantasm? Terrifier. Never heard of it. Hold on a second. 
Yeah, I never heard that one. Okay. Um, this is probably this, and this is probably the probably one of the least disturbing scenes in the movie. And the sad thing about it is, is that they're they're making a third one. I turned it off after this, and I can take a lot. Uh, Terrifier of the Clown. Yeah, George. Uh, that's why I put the parent advisory up. He kidnapped a girl. Hung her upside down. Right? So, so her feet are up, and she's dangling upside down. She's nude. He takes a chainsaw. Starting from her nether regions. Cuts her in half. That sounds like Saw. It's much more disturbing than Saw. Oh, my God. God. And then... They've literally run out of ways to kill people, George, in them, haven't they? George, I think it's more than gore. Because you can have... I don't mind gore. It's the way it was gory, and I think it was the way that he was killing people. I think that's what... But I, but I did go back and watch the movie from start to end. He's one of those guys that doesn't. He, I don't want to give any spoilers, but he doesn't like. Nobody catches him. No one kills him in the movie or anything like that. Yeah. Well, no, I guess I, it takes a lot for me to get. You know, like I have a buddy of mine who can't watch anything with blood in it. I'm like, well, dude, that cuts out like ninety percent of movies. I just get to the point where it's like, you know, if you've seen enough movies like that, you're kind of like nothing shocks you. Yeah. You know, so when it does happen, you're kind of like, okay, yeah, you knew that was going to happen. But well, like my wife won't watch American Horror Story. I have yet to watch American Horror Story. And, uh, hey, what up, East Coast? I have never seen that. The, the Shining? Um. I mean, that's kind of is, that's more psychological than anything. That's more like 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 Japanese stuff. I don't get scared. like Japanese horror doesn't do anything for me. And they're um, all over the place with their horror. My God. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Netflix. Netflix has got some treasures on it. Um, one of the best horror movies, probably though, was Cabin in the Woods. No, I haven't, seen, I haven't one. seen. I haven't seen. I haven't seen that um, one. Evil Dead Two was good. It was. It was. Evil Dead Two. Evil Dead One Evil, was. Evil Dead Two knew what it was. Evil Dead Two, you knew what was going on. It was just yeah. kind of like, you know, it, you're just kind of amazed that it's like Jesus is still going on. They found yeah. more victims. Wow. <laughs> really bad. Really bad. Like. Uh, oh my God. Really, really bad uh, graphics. Or I'm not gra not graphics, but special See, effects. The special effects were terrible. Yeah. You know what? Pre CGI, you just kind of look at things. It's kind of like, oh my god, we've come a long way. It's, yeah. We have, you know. But hey, we oh, got to wrap. The wall kind of technically was the lead singer of Pink Floyd going crazy. Yeah, it was. He was cracking up. He was. He was cracking up. But we got to cut this short. I got to get going here, but okay. I don't know what it is, but the longer we go, the more viewers we get. <laughs> it, you know what? That's weird. We started the show with like 18. We're up to 35. Yeah, that is weird. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for watching. But yeah, it's coming at the weirdest times. <laughs> uh, George, you, George, I can't tell you how much we appreciate the donation, donations tonight. Thank you for um, everything, George. We really appreciate it. We really, and I think somebody else gave a donation too, but I forget your name. I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I, I we appreciate everybody coming. Davey, appreciate you. Sarah, appreciate you. Uh, uh, no stop was the other one. He was no stop. Donated. Yes, that's the appreciate one. appreciate you donating uh, donating as well. No stop. Um, Bob, Davey, Sarah, George. Bob, the guy, our typical people who were here all yeah. the time. We can't tell you how much we appreciate you being here. Um, this is something we just do because we enjoy it. Uh, so we really appreciate you guys coming here. Um, we got a little off the rails towards the end tonight. We usually don't do free talk at the end mm -hmm. of Vikings Vintage. It's usually just the history and that's it. This, yep. this, the conversation that we had um, the conversation we had tonight, if you guys enjoyed this conversation, this is what we do on Fridays. 
On Fridays, what we do is the first, what, 15, 20, 20 minutes? Yes, yeah, football. We talk Vikings. Uh, we talk Vikings. NFL, and then whatever. after that, we let you guys come on, and we just – whatever you guys want to talk about. It's a free for uh, But this Friday, we're taking off. Um, so we're probably going to have – uh, probably gonna have three shows in a week, which is a lot for us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday because we had the wrestling show. I'm gonna get with Yogi, see if he can make an opening or make a you know, help with the background, help with some graphics on that. Um, and then our vintage show, uh, we probably do 76, that's the last Super Bowl season. We'll probably do that next week. Yeah, we're kind of on 50 years, folks. Yeah, and then, um, then the Friday fee for all. So that's then the Friday fee for all. That's where yeah. you come in and just talk about whatever you want yeah so and this parental advisory stickery is up the whole time on that friday show <laughs> yes yeah, sir i'm a night owl too so i did get a new job um that, that actually pays more than the microsoft job so i am not going to be able to stay up as late um but i you know i had to be work at eight so i gotta get up at seven so i Going to be going to bed around one or so because I don't need that much sleep. You're on Central so, Time, right? Yeah. So it's okay. We'll just right yeah. You're on Central Time, so we'll just watch it really yeah, yeah. close. Yeah. Friday night though, I'll, I don't work weekends, so Friday night can be. We can oh, Friday work. then. Yeah. You're doing Friday. Just sit back yeah. and listen to everybody bitch and moan. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Like I said, I can't appreciate how much we enjoy you guys watching us. We appreciate everyone. Thank you again, here. everybody. Thank you so yeah. much. So until next time.